We're starting to work on our 2022 recap episode. Nice. This is an announcement for all the DJs. If you guys want to get involved, there's going to be a poll up. There'll be a link in the description. There'll be links in bios. And there's a QR code. We go through different categories and we kind of list the top three songs, the worst songs and whatnot. Gather all the information and kind of list what all these DJs, who they voted for, what they voted for. And you guys can go on the website, contribute and put in your votes for our 2022 recap episode. Hey, yo, what's good, what's good, what's good? Welcome to Reflections of a DJ, the Roll podcast presented by DJ City and Beat Source. I am one of your hosts, DJ Crooked. We got DJ Never here. Yo, 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 what up? We got Jamie the Great. Yeah. DJ D Miles is MIA once again. Fixing his ass. Getting his ass fixed. It's that time um, of month. It's that time of the month. <laughs> it's that time of the year. Every quarter. We got special guests. I've, I've wanted him on the podcast for a minute. And, I, you know, we've been playing like, you know, back and forth, trying to get him on. But it seems perfect that we have him on right now. Because it's like rodeo season mm -hmm. in Las Vegas. Yeah. This is when everybody, you know, involved in, I don't know, country or anything. Like, I'm ignorant with a lot of this country and yeah. like, and this rodeo shit talk. Mm -hmm. But it's perfect that we have him on so he can like kind of school it. us and explain to us what's going on. But mm -hmm. I, I would say he's he's maybe one of the most sought after open format DJs in country music. Am I okay to say that? Yeah, man. I mean, are you number so. one? I mean, yeah. he, he, this, uh -huh. this dude is, is kind of like, we are ignorant to country music, right? Most really? of us, right? Really? Well, yeah. Yeah, so he's going to be schooling us and we're going to be asking a lot of dumb questions with him. <laughs> but I'm, I'm glad he's here. But this dude is huge in country music. Mm-hmm. And he's one of us. He's an open format DJ. I consider him one of our brothers uh, in the you. game. Mm -hmm. And I'm really glad he's here. We have DJ Silver in the building. Pleasure. What's good? Thank you for finally having me. Years yeah, in, yeah. Man. I mean, we've been uh, speaking for like years. Yeah, it just never worked because I would hit a 10 p.m. flight, play at midnight, be out at 6, and be in San Diego the next morning or something. Yeah, and you have your own day here in Las Vegas. That's right. That's right. September 21st. Recognize. Take it up with Carol Goodman if you got this issue. Wait, it's DJ Silver Day. That's right. How do you get your own day out here? I... My publicist called and said, hey, the mayor said, we got a date for you. Oh, shit. And I was like, yeah, man, I'm in. So I went in, hung out with her for like an hour. I felt like me and old Carol G became a good friend. And <laughs> she sent me a plaque, keys and everything. It was wow. great. So wait, wait, so you're you're in Vegas a lot. A lot. Mm -hmm. and I, But I don't see you that often. Like we, we bump heads. and we, yeah. I mean, you were just telling me that. Well, the first time we met or linked up was at Light, <laughs> Light Nightclub. Light Nightclub. When, do you remember when Light opened? That was supposed to be the thing. Do you know what I mean? But Hakkasan jumped in open first. Do you remember this? Yeah, this is like when Light reopened in Mandalay Bay. That's right. Yeah. But it was considered a mega club when it opened. Do y'all remember that? Yeah. yeah, it's supposed Lights. to be like all house music. Yeah, so I'm in, man. So Circle A, people dropping from the streets. And yeah. Right. They, there was like a whole production. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I was. they booked me for the date for Saturday. And when you go to Vegas, man, you don't go to Vegas alone. You call everybody and their sister to come show up. Mm -hmm. You show up to a guest list, and you want that front door guy just to be tired of your name by the time you get in there. So we roll in. My tour manager goes, bro, it's crooked. I was like, we're about to be friends. And I just got a bottle of tequila because I always order extra on my rider. Stuck it on the table. So let's go, boys. <laughs> So you went to our table. <laughs> Stuck it on the table. I don't remember this. Why I don't remember it? I was, was I probably I got you up? drunk. Yeah. I mean, you were dancing wow. in the DJ booth by the time I was done with you. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> but it was in the time where it's like, I'm in the Vegas world. I'm kind of an outsider. But I've been playing Vegas full time for 13, 14 years. Yeah. From the days of like Taboo Ultra Lounge. Mm. And, but I was not in the, the click of Vegas DJ. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I'd come in. And, but why is that? Why do you think? I just never tried to be. I had I had my crew of friends like Shift and Hollywood and all the guys that we rolled oh, in. Oh, okay, okay. And it was kind of, I never really did the hip hop rooms and stuff. I did the bank Sundays. I did, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, it was yeah. The iconic parties, but I never, Jets, all the way back to Jet Nightclub kind of stuff. Mm. But it was, uh, but I, I never had like, I never want to be your DJ's favorite DJ. I want to be your DJ's girlfriend's favorite DJ. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, wait, never, did you ever meet Silver in the, like the 2000s? We might have met before. I like, like back in the back in the days, yeah. yeah. Many a casinos we walked yeah. past and see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's funny. I see his face quite often at Zooks, uh, like all his because he's always here. I think yeah. he's always here like every fucking week because I see I his face all too. the time. Yeah, sex sells, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now Zook is Zook is good. I was at MGM Properties for years and years and years, and uh, Scott Sabella and all the MGM people went over to Zook and they said we have this new property coming. We want to bring you over and. Um, you know the, the the contracts aligns, you know, and we're yeah. You know, new home Zook. Yeah. You're doing Zook uh, tonight. Mm -hmm. You're yes, doing sir. the after party um, for. Let me see. I have the notes here. Like, it's me and cheat codes tonight. No, you have like a Luke Bryan after party. Oh yeah, yeah. Zook. yeah Luke Luke, Luke's my dude. Yeah, yeah. That's my neighbor, by the way. He's your neighbor. Yeah. 
Isn't he like huge in country music? Uh, he's the, Luke is the best human, but yeah, he's he's massive. I was just saying, he's the face of country music. I was right. just thinking that Resorts was like the hub for country music yeah. at this point. Yes. What is he like, Drake of country music? Right I would now? say he's the Drake yeah. with, the, with the Southern draw. Yeah, <laughs> but for us, why is it that you know never you know Jamie I probably D Miles? Mm -hmm. Why is it that we don't know about this shit? No, I don't know. I, I, I just and th this might be a good way to say it may not be like uh, yeah. I don't play Bad Bunny. You don't pay Luke Bright. Mm. So it could be the same. Like if you said, pull out a Bad Bunny track, I'm going, bro, which Bad Bunny track's hitting? Cause I got to download this Joker. Wow. Okay. Do you know what okay, I mean? Okay. But you were like, Silver, what, what, uh, what Luke Bryan song is hitting? I'm mm -hmm. like, play Country Girl, Shake It. You know? Yeah. It's like you're from Mars and we're from that's Venus. It. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's it. That's it. We, and we send text message in the middle and just get down. The only way, the only reason why I know about country music is one resort tour and I'm there at Gatsby and then my girl and her yeah. mom are like the biggest yeah. country fans. Of all so you're doing the after party for Luke Bryan, mm -hmm. who's like the Drake of country music. Yeah. yeah. And you're doing that tonight. Mm -hmm. Why am I not hearing more I, about I tell you? Everybody in the world, I have the best job in the entire world. I travel with the biggest country superstars yeah. on the planet. The Aldeans, the Kane Browns, the whoever's. Mm -hmm. Then I play 11 in Miami or Zook and Zook with Tiesto and like, like Vegas. party favorite night. So wait, wait. So my question is with, do you consider yourself an open format? DJ? Sure. Absolutely. You do. I mean, I can go, I feel like, I, you know, not like talking about myself, but I feel like I can step in any room and I could rock it at a high level. Mm. You can stick me, except until I started hearing y'all talk about reggaeton the other night. Then fuck, I'm out. I gotta put you on. I gotta send you yeah. a folder too. <laughs> I was just, I'm googling Q U. I was like, oh god, <laughs> my southern accent's winning right now. So wait, you listen to the podcast, right? Yeah, every time it comes out, that's so my. It's like, do you know on the Spotify thing they're putting out? This is my dream lineup, like Morgan Wallen, like, like. Yeah, Takashi Six Nine. Mine says the Road Podcast and Kids Bop. Did you, oh, wait, what, do you, what is this that's thing? A, that's a fact. Well, what is this thing I'm that's saying fast. with the festivals thing? What what is that? So it, that's basically your algorithms of your playlist. Right. Who you listen to the most? Who would be your dream lineup? Mm. I just don't listen to music in my car. Oh, so they take whatever you're listening to and make it into a festival. Yes. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, so everyone's doing this. Yeah. All right. So cool. I don't know how many tickets are selling, but it's me, you, and Kids Bop. <laughs> <laughs> That's a hell of a lineup. <laughs> so when you hear us talking about like reggaeton and all this, you're just like, you don't know what. I'm lear I know enough to get me in a room and play. Like I can play the Daddy Yankees and stuff. I can get us through a room because I'm, I'm from South Texas. Mm -hmm. But when they get in, they start the Bronx and all this. I'm like, oh, God. You right. know? Oh, God. <laughs> but I'm, down, I'm literally on. <laughs> I, I'm like listening to you guys and pause on the space bar. Yeah, yeah. Typing in songs in like DJ City, ripping them. Y you are? Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, wow. I don't want to ever be unprepared. What part of Texas are you from? Uh, from Austin, Texas. Okay, cool. Oh, Austin. So you. you that's nice. the most San Francisco city yeah. in Texas. That's, why, that's why I left. <laughs> <laughs> Is that why? Facts. Straight fucking truth why I left. Wait, wait. Explain that, though. Austin, you, I, there's a time in my life while I'd argue with you. That Austin, Texas is the greatest city in America. Yeah. Playing Scottsdale, playing Vegas, playing LA, playing Chicago. Austin was it. We had seven nights a week. Industry was tight. We would go to Vegas. All industry would come with me. And it, you know, people get older and things change. And dude, like homeless got out of, out of whack. It wasn't safe to go downtown. And just, uh, I don't know, just kind of hurt, hurt my heart a little bit seeing where my city was going. Really? Yeah. And I, I still... I, I don't play there to this day. I got a date pending for the ACM Awards in Vegas in, in Austin that I haven't even accepted yet. Wait, so it, it what's changed in the city that you don't like? Just it just it's not home. When when I was there, we were all, we would all walk as a group. There'd be hundred of us walk down to. We'd hit the boogie. We'd hit Vici. We'd hit all the nightclubs and friends. You know what I mean? And yeah. I, I just don't think I have that connection anymore. Mm -hmm. And it's not safe as it used to be. Like we could park on. East 6, walk to West 6, hit 4th Street and drink. Now nah, you don't go to 6th Street. Now nah, you're only rainy district. It's, I don't know. I just, I just know where that city was. Yeah. yeah. And I hate where the city is. Mm. Really? Because it just, it's, it's home to me. You know, it's, I mean. It just feels so different to you. Absolutely. And listen, I know change is progression. Progression is good. Yeah. Maybe it outgrew me. Maybe whatever. I just, it's just not, it's not home for me anymore. That's interesting. You know, I, the, the most, the biggest complaint I hear about people from Austin is that like all these corporate tech companies are just coming in and taking over. Taking over. Money took it over. Yeah. And they just kind of. Took the fill out of the city. Yeah. They're just like ripping the soul out of the 100%. city. 100%. But I, I feel like. That was a nicer way to say what I just said. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I just went Kanye in your ass. <laughs> Fuck. I'm sorry. <laughs> nah, nah. So, so wait, you're in where? Nashville? Yes, sir. Nashville. Nashville oh, nice. right now. Mm-hmm. So like, all right, you've been coming to Vegas for a long time. Mm -hmm. We've, we've, you know, encountered each other here and there. Open format DJ. You're the biggest dude in country music, right? Mm -hmm. And, and well, I'm kind of wondering why we don't hear more 
about about you in mm-hmm. kind of like the hip hop or the other realms? Why is there such a separation with you know, country no. music and all and all these other genres? Do you think? Uh, I think there's a stigma to country music. Yes, and the stigma is it's boring. It's your dog's left. Your sister's hot. Country music to me. What do you mean, sister? Like hot? these people like are some redneck. Yeah, like redneck yeah. inbred yeah. shit. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, but country music to me is fun. I'll mix Luke Bryan with Drake. I'll mix Jason Aldean with Little Wayne, and you won't even know it hit you. So you would you do that at Zook all night? Wouldn't hesitate. Wow. But the thing is this, right? The shock factor, I think, hits them a little bit. You know? So, yeah. I mean, would you play the original or would you play like a remix of a... A, a remix I made. And there's, like, I will okay. take, uh, I have just like every every genre, I'll make DJ edits of, like, hooks of songs. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, I'll take a Alabama song and mix it on top of Run DMC, like on just when the keys change or the beat drops or we hit the 808 on the right tab, hit, or hit the line the ones and twos, like, whatever it is, however you mix. Like, I have a full folder I can just party rock the whole set yeah the songs you probably never heard that the biggest downloaded songs that ever probably hit the world so like you're you're mixing these genres that you're doing it for country music mm-hmm. and my, my question is you've been doing this for how long now 20 years especially almost 23 years yeah almost 23 years mm-hmm. so we've talked about all year that like hip-hop has had some of the worst releases right mm-hmm. yeah and then edm kind of took over there's there's a little bit more releases a lot more releases with edm and house you know, the temples have gone up and everything like that. What is the state of country music and pop music right now? It's, it's I think it's one and two. They, they actually have like a subgenre called pop country. Mm-hmm. It's the Jimmy Allen's, the Luke Bryan's, the right. world that it can come in and you can mix them seamlessly. They're almost made like DJ records. But I mean, w- would you say that country music is the biggest genre right now? It's I always hear that. I would it's say the Latin music for sure. Latin music is bigger. That's that's not I I, I think every just like uh, just like the Michael Jordan, everybody's trying to be number two compared to Latin music. It's massive. And I, and and being in Miami and Vegas enough to know it's just you don't book against A. J. Balvin or you don't book against a bad bunny. You know, it's it's just like George Strait at T Mobile Arena Saturday. Mm-hmm. You're not going to see another concert in this area in downtown because straight's at T-Mobile Arena. And and are you like, is there a lot of competition with other DJs, open format DJs in the country music scene? Um, yeah, sometimes, but they you are. know, I, 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 more now than definitely when I started, I was it, you know, you were the one that was it. That was it. I would play it taboo and they're like, silver, I know you're going to play country tonight. Just please get out of it. They would tell you that? Oh, yeah. Mark would tell me that all the time. That's funny. And I would <laughs> So they were them. anti-country music at the time? No, it wasn't no. that. It was just, you know how these Vegas guys are. They're right. like, you know, don't scratch here. I need 80% hip-hop tonight. Walk up, get rid of the hip-hop tonight, and we need house music. You know you know what I mean? Table right. 17, what's a B-side Cascade record? Could you put it on? Mm-hmm. That kind of stuff. But I, I just did me, man. But so how, how is it now, though? How's it changed? You can go as deep as you want. Into I played an hour party. last night and played all country. And played all country. Yeah. And you're, and you're mashing it up and yeah. you're doing remixes and edits? Absolutely. Like I make personal edits, like show edits of all the stuff. And I make it for a DJ to play by a DJ in a, in a DJ environment to mm. win the crowd. I'm, I'm kind of curious. What are the top five country music songs out right now? Out right now or that I would play? Well, it, well I have. It's a two-part question, okay. actually. All right. So like I got right ADD. now, a lot of. Huh? <laughs> I have bad ADD. Let's go in okay, person. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so right now we're seeing like not a lot of new music is making their way into the clubs. Right. Right. It's like people want to hear nostalgic shit. That's right, right throwbacks. Now. Is that the same for country music as well? Absolutely. Absolutely. It is. So like, just well, I keep saying it, but Luke Bryan, Country Girl, Shake It. Country Girl, Shake It For Me, Girl, Shake It For Me, Girl, Shake It For Me. It still rocks to this day. Like, Save a Horse, Ride a Cowboy. Save a horse, ride a cowboy. Everybody says, Save a horse, ride a cowboy. Kills it. But then I put on the new, uh, I don't even know, um, I don't want to throw anybody underneath the boat, but I put on the new Dana Shea, because Shea Mooney is one of my best friends. I put on the new Dana Shea, and they're like, because like, they don't have the feel, with the, they don't have the familiarity, they don't have the feel, they don't have the feelings for the song yet, they don't have the memories for that song. Mm. And, and, and any time I play music, it doesn't matter the genre, I'm just trying to pull a memory out of your head. I'm trying so, to touch your soul a little bit. So is that your thinking of why these new songs aren't hitting as, as much? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That it needs time to, to like, cultivate. kind of, yeah. Yeah. To kind of, uh, I don't know, marinate. Cultivate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Love it. That's interesting. I didn't know that would, would have happened in country music. And the stuff that is really like big in countries, the Morgan Wallens is the slower sing-along stuff. You can play that all night in Nashville, but you ain't touching that on the Vegas Strip out here. 
because uh, it might be you and another, another fat dude in the back going, chasing you. You know what I mean? You're getting down, but you got 30 girls looking at you like, and that's when you need to switch your shit. Mm. Wait, wait, so I don't give a damn if you like it. If those 58 girls are sitting there looking at you, having the best time of their life, homie, you can chill out for a second. So when I hear, <laughs> like if I went out, if, if I go out to, I'm going, I'm going to try to go out to Zook tonight to Love hear it. you. Mm -hmm. So if I go out to hear you at Zook tonight, that's a completely different set than you would play in Nashville. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm. But you know, with, with that being said, I have a new record coming out with Sam Hunt mixes, like with Jimmy Allen with, and I'll sample in tracks that I'll make, I'll make country music big room for you. Wow. That, mm, they, you have you have an interesting story. You're Jason Aldean's uh, DJ, yeah. tour DJ. Last twelve years, yeah. Last twelve years, mm -hmm. but they heard you at a, his manager at Taboo. Heard heard you at Taboo on a Sunday night. You were mixing one of his songs with She's Country with Nelly Country Grammar with Country Grammar. I was touring with Nelly doing the after parties at that time, and no one was with this. You were touring with so Nelly had this drink called Pimp Juice come out. Yeah, and so he went on tour, and I, me and a guy named Tatum Polk, his friend, we he would host the parties, and I would DJ the parties, all the after parties on tour. Wait, was this before Nelly started doing country music? Uh, he had this song with Tim McGraw that year. That, that we did. year. Mm -hmm. And then how'd you link up with Nelly? Tatum Polk. He, uh, he literally said he, he's Nelly's cousin. Everybody's related in St. Louis. You know what I mean? And he said, we have this energy drink called Pimp Juice. And listen, here's, here's your idea. What do you think? And I said, this is a college kid's drink. Let's take this to college towns and do after parties, which I was doing always. And he's like, I feel like. Anybody can play Chicago, well, not anybody, but Chicago, Miami, Vegas, Boston, those are the targets. Yeah. But I feel like a lot of people forgot that the Oklahoma Cities, the Tulsa, the St. Louis, the Little Rocks, I made a great living playing 90% of the Midwest B markets. This was like in 2003, right? Yeah. Because I remember this one, Pim Juice, when it came out. That's it? Yeah. <laughs> well, I, just take, I just checked the Tim McGraw Nelly came out on all four. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. It's interesting because like what you're saying is kind of like with comedy, yeah. comedy like big comedians they want to like kind of do shows or like do uh, record specials in like big cities, mm -hmm. so like California, San Francisco, L. A. Yeah, and New York, New York or like you know Miami Chicago. or Chicago. Mm -hmm. But then like I remember that one of my favorite comedians, Bill Burr, of course. started doing kind of like other other cities. I just sent my wife to show right? in Orlando last week. And he started dominating these markets mm -hmm. because no one was paying attention to these markets. So you don't sleep I, on it. Yeah, yeah, because there's kind of this idea that they don't want to hear liberal or like... Um, they just want to laugh. Do you know what I'm saying? I do, buddy. But, but there's this idea that nowhere these states, these states and these cities that are seen as like either redneck or red states, mm -hmm. they don't want to hear like blue state comedy or lib liberals talking about that. Is just, like that's, that. Their, that's their escape and to let them laugh, you know? They, yeah, don't, yeah. They, don't want, they don't want anybody's ideology pushed off on it. They want to go in and have the night and have their night. Right. But I've said it for years. It's like, we can all go to Vegas and make, say, five grand a night. But we can go, and, and I've got to, I know you're here, you're here, you're here. Mm -hmm. But I can go to Tulsa, Oklahoma at the club, and I, there's no competition. And they're, and they're excited to have somebody that plays Las Vegas and Tulsa. Or Dallas, or San Antonio's, or Jacksonville, Florida's. Birmingham, Alabama's. They got money, too, and they would love to have you. So what's the, what's the city or state? that everyone sleeps on that's like the best fucking place to DJ Boston Mass hands down Boston Massachusetts yeah I love they Boston. get down it may not be a secret to anybody but that gets down with like country music all the above you just walk in and rock it really yeah. Boston Massachusetts for you love it Wait, outside of Boston I, I consider that like an east coast big city gotcha um, let me like, give me some of the kind sleeper of the, the middle the middle Kansas stage. City Wichita Kansas St. Louis Kansas. Um, I would say Tyler Texas like the little small college towns. I've never even heard of that. Yeah, there you go. You're wow. sleeping. On I had to go to the right side of Dallas. Um, <laughs> Albuquerque, New Mexico's. Uh, really? Absolutely. They just, Dude, my girl's from there. There's no nightlife over that, there. That's what I'm trying to say to you. You go in, you do an event and get out. You, I'm not saying buy a condo downtown. I'm saying let's throw an event. You know? That's crazy. And it's like, it's because you think about it. Everybody in the world is in Vegas tonight. Whoever you think you are, you're trying to be, is in this city. Not You don't have the competition or the... People are like, holy shit, Bieber is downtown Tulsa tonight. Where is it not? Hell, Bieber's at the Staples Center tonight. Cool. You know what I mean? So there's like a, a more a, more of a, an appreciation. Absolutely. They yeah. don't get For it the entertainment much. they're getting. They're not as fed as much. Yeah, they're not desensitized right. or jaded, right? That's right. Not saying by any means I'm Justin Bieber. I wish, you know. Yeah. But it's You're Justin Bieber to somebody. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying that they're hungry. They're there for it and give it to them. And I I you know, I made a great living by traveling. The Midwest, the the forgotten cities, the Wichita, Kansas, the Omaha, Nebraska's of the world, the Sioux City, Iowa's, 
and Cincinnati, Ohio is the Columbus, Ohio of the world. So like, uh, what do you call it? Do you feel like country music and all these middle, these middle, um, kind of middle America states and cities, you think they get a bad stigma or bad rap? Not there. They don't outside no? of when, you know, outside the people that don't know about but like, like I'm from New York. Nevis yeah. from New York. He's from LA. We're kind of like, what would you call us? Like Yankees, like big city. No, no I would just, uh, like big city liberals. Yeah. Like, you know, let's get ignorant for a little no, bit. I, <laughs> I mean, like I play, you know we play New York. Like for example, we play yeah. New York, we play LA, we play Madison square garden. We play mm-hmm. the Staples center. I don't play Tal New York. I don't play, I don't even know a nightclub in LA, but we play Staples center. We get out. So, so I'm not really, I, I just know we have a built in crowd. I, so I can't really speak on like I've but never they, played Tower Marky New York. But my my thing is like like we have city like city folk right. We have stereotypes mm-hmm. on country sure? folk, yeah, yeah, country folk, right? Yeah, and country folk have stereotypes on city folk. Well, I'm sure, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. So I'm saying, is that the problem? Why like it doesn't get integrated as much? Maybe I just think they um, maybe both sides have closed minds. They're, they're not open up to mm. let me. I would rather prejudge than just hey, dude, check it out. Maybe, I don't maybe. Know. I, I just find it interesting, you know, mm-hmm. and you know, you've been coming to Vegas for, for, I don't know, over what? Basically most of my DJ life. I actually thought you lived out here for I have a, a 702 number because I was moving here because funny story, <laughs> I was playing at Taboo. I used, the only way I get to play Vegas, I was, I would book shift out of town and take his Taboo spot. Mm-hmm. Oh, so I'd book him in Cincinnati and I'd come in and that's where I met Jason. So Vegas was hitting for me. Jason said, come out on tour with us. Gave me my 2010 schedule. And Jason Aldean is a, like a multi-platinum artist. Yeah. He's huge, 30, 30, huge. 28, 29 number ones, like billion streams. And yeah. I mean, we can't go to Target. You know what I mean? That's hard. Yeah, that dude Country is Boy. like it, bro. Yeah, he's he's the dude, man. He's literally one of my best friends, if not my best friend in the world. Our family's best friends. Our kids are six weeks apart. I mean, everything. We're going to, I'm going skiing with Hillbilly on the 11th. You know what I mean? So this is all because of Shift. Shift, that's right. I tell him all the time. <laughs> Wow! <laughs> yeah. How was Cincinnati play? <laughs> and it, no, I it just, I just, I'm a firm believer that you get put in the right places by the right people at the right time, and that's how it was. Wow! And he put me in, and dude, I just remember like not putting a lot on blast. I was the first DJ to go on a country tour, and they didn't know how to pay a guy, and they're like five hundred bucks. I was like, oh, all right, yeah, let's. I'm gonna look at a bigger picture here. Single guy, no kids, no nothing to worry. Wait, about. Wait, this is your first tour with with Jason, Jason Aldean, and I mean, money is. So you were getting five hundred, yeah, but night. that's kind of like no. similar to like anyone's first tour with oh, an yeah, artist, no. right? Yeah, a yeah. DJ, a, a DJ. How, a DJ. Many, wait, how yeah. many nights was it? Three nights a week. We have it. We have it made in country music. We leave on Wednesday and back Sunday. Oh, so but it wasn't like a fifty city tour. It was something? like an eighty four city tour. Eighty four city. But, tour. So how long were you away, dude? That's four, four like, nights a week. Four nights a week for the whole year. How, but yeah. how, for a whole year. Now, now that he's as big as he is, we leave July through October. He does forty dates, and there we go. And then you try. Oh wow, that's crazy. That's it. That's but it's kind of like doing the military. Like at the end of your, at the end of the tour, you're getting a fat paycheck, right? No, I mean I worked it out. I said, here's you want forty dates. Let's do a lump sum. Here's the price, and let's just go. You buy in bulk. I'm with you. And and and, and I've, I'm been, I always believe that you go where you're wanted, not accepted. Wait. So how do you get wait, on your first tour? How did you get paid? After every date? Or? You know, at the end of the week, they would, well, Live Nation would wire me $1,500. $1,500. Then I would be gigging after parties every night just to pay mortgage, you know? Wow. Yeah. So, it, and I've already, I'd already established myself in these towns. We'd go to Little Rock, I'd play. We'd go to Tulsa, we'd play. We'd go to Dallas, I'm after. So, I was, I was doing all right. And then you, you started touring with him in what, 2013? 2010. 2010. Yeah, 12 years. 12 years. Yeah. So, now how is the business? Is? How is it now? How do, you, how do you organize it, though? What do you, you mean? Get, you get fifty percent up front. No, and it, no. Or you get everything up front. I get every every Wednesday. I get a wire from Live Nation after tour. Do you have merch? Ah, yeah, buddy. I own, that, I own companies. That's buddy. that's where it's at. You got you got to get your shit right as a DJ. That's where it's at. Wait, wait. Expand on this a little bit more. I, I mean, I you, I could sell your T shirt, or I could start my merch company and sell my merch, and buy the merch from me and sell it. Wait, wait. You have a merch company? Absolutely. Wait, wait. But I, I have many hats, brother. The average millionaire has seven forms of income. Yeah, yeah. But explain, when did you start this merch company? After the first year when I realized I would come out of pocket, gross amounts, ten, eleven thousand dollars worth. The of first, when you first went on tour with Jason? Yeah, and I'm, I'm only, after all the bills are paid, I'm making 1500 bucks. Okay. But Were people asking you for a DJ Silver t-shirt? Yeah. It's hot commodity, bro. Yeah. 
So you're, <laughs> no, no, no. So you're, you're DJ. I'm saying, where did this start from? Where did this? Well, I just walked from? in, and they, and they were just. I just see when I walk into a room, and I was like, "This is cool. We're making money here." But how do I take here, here, and how do I circle this? And how, what, what are other forms of income I can do here? Right. And it's just the way my mindset's always been. And I saw Jason selling $150,000, $200,000 a night in merch. I said, bro, can I throw a t-shirt up? He's like, you get two t-shirts, but you got to match my price. So, you, bro, in. So I designed the t-shirt. So the second time you went on tour, you had t-shirts. Two right? t-shirts. By the second week. The second week. Oh, okay, <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. Fuck. So you saw this early. You're like, all yes, right. Sir. Yeah. Oh, wow. So now, you know, I own a cash, I own a clothing company called Cashville Hooligans. And I also do uh, my tour merch as well. All right. So, like, the second Dog. week, you got your tour stuff up. Mm -hmm. And how many did you sell? Dude, the first couple of weeks, I mean, it was gangbusters, like 10. You know what I mean? It 10. was like, yeah. But, and now it's like, you know, we got a merch guy. I was like, how much? We slaying some cotton tonight? And he's like, yeah, man, you did 1500 bucks tonight. You did. And there's some cities where you just don't sell. We know it going into it. But there's some cities we know we're like, stock up on hoodies. It's going to be cold. Let's double up tonight. Oh, so 12, it's, 12, it's a science. 12 years in, right? Mm -hmm. When did you, so you're still moving steadily Absolutely. And, and your name gets a little bigger and then you're selling more and more and more. As you, that's the goal you hope, right? Yeah. 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 What are you selling now? Still two t-shirts or are you selling no. CDs or what are you selling now? <laughs> no, I never sold CDs, but, uh, uh, CDs, what are we from? Yeah, singles. I know, right? Yeah, that, but no one's, you're talking about, you're talking about <laughs> when did the iPod come out? No, <laughs> yo, <laughs> Cricket, you'd be surprised middle America is behind years. Straight facts. You turn that clock back 10 years when you play in Nashville. Bro, so really? the CDs are hot uh, in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Yeah, hey, I mean, I mean, I don't know about all I'm with you and you said they're hot like mother. They're hot. <laughs> they're hot. That's what you hang for the fucking mirror. You can't keep them right? stuck. Yeah, <laughs> but it, it's funny. So in Austin, I would say, you know, you can't pay me what I know I want to make mm -hmm. because the DJs were making hundred bucks a night. I said, charge a ten dollar cover, I'll give a mixtape and I'll sell five make five bucks as mine. Dude, we went through like fifteen thousand mixed CDs. That so that was just another hustle at the front door. Mm. Damn. Man. Just just trying to get what I thought I was worth. And so depending on what city you're in, you could sell anywhere from 10 t-shirts or, so or to like 100. Three, 400. Yeah. Three, 400. Mm -hmm. So wh wh where, what city do you sell the most merch? Um, Texas is always big for me. Um, Arkansas is big. Tennessee, because we're home. Uh, Alabama moves them. Wow. When you go upstate New York, you might... No, you ain't moving a whole lot. You know what I mean? Cool, right. 10. <laughs> you go to California, you ain't, you're not selling a lot. Um, Arizona is like middle, middle of the way. The Wichita, Kansas, anything with an American flag on it is going. So because you started, oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. Because you started this merch, started making merch the second week of this tour mm -hmm. with Jason. Mm -hmm. Now you have a merch company. Yeah, man. So when you're making merch for friends or like other I just, businesses? I just buy it for myself basically. So okay. I designed the shirts, we put it in, we, and we processed the whole thing. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blow your mind here. So I hooked up with a company in Las Vegas where I don't have to put any money in advance on my shirts and I can have up to say 200 designs and it prints to order and we split the merch cost. Right. They're doing it like DTG, direct That's to it. garment. Direct. Yeah. And I don't have, it's a hundred percent profit. If y'all don't know what DTG is, direct to garment, it's not screen print. It's literally like an inkjet printer. That's it. That prints on apparel. That's it. And so it's, yeah, there's no risk. There's like, you know, when you, when you screen print, mm -hmm. you have to pay for them to burn screens. That's right. There has to be a minimum. There's, you know, there's, yep ink involved they have to mix the colors to like match what that's like right. if you have your face on there they have to match the skin tone that's right they have to do all this manual then labor you're stuck with tons of like extra merch you're not gonna sell right so so we just come in and so it's a 35 40 dollars a t-shirt let's cut it down the middle i'll take 15 dollars pure profit t-shirt any day of the week okay and no overhead so you have a merch hustle yeah man got to. okay that's interesting where did, I, you, where did you get this hustle mentality i just uh because not everyone would think i'm gonna make merch yeah. On the second week of tour. Well, after this, I hope they do. Yeah. yeah. Well, there you go. But you did you did you were your parents like entrepreneurs? Did you get I, this hustle from somebody? Uh, I, I'm, I mean, not really. My dad's a truck driver. Mom was a school teacher. So it's like I just uh, I just always wanted to more than I have, more than I had, more than I could get. More the word no just ticks me off, man. So I was like, let's go. That's, you, that's you, interesting. That's how I got my first record deal. <laughs> sure. yeah. Explain that. Well, just try being a DJ in country music when you're taking Alabama, Dixieland Delight, mixing, and you call your boys Nappy Roots and they come in and do the song for you. And it's it's uh, millions of downloads. On. What's, what's great is that you are like the premier DJ in like, in your, I don't know, genre. It's, you're realm, so, you're realm, such a maybe. niche, yeah, in your, yeah. Re, in your realm, 
right? And it's just, and just how long were you dominating alone? You're almost like Nicki Minaj in the 2000s. She had like <laughs> no, she had no, no competition. competition. Yeah. You had like no competition, yeah. right? Um, I, I just, I, you know, as far I don't know. I, I now you see that's a good idea. Kind of let's put a DJ on, but it was it was probably five six years before anybody else tried it. Mm. Because I'm telling you, the Twitter trolls were rolling when I first started doing it. You know, like how? What in the living hell is this guy doing out of here? This guy, Mama should have killed him when he was little. You know, he's ruining country music. God damn! And all I was trying to do was oh. open that genre up for people like y'all that wouldn't give it a chance to give it a chance. Maybe maybe you recommend. So there's there's people that don't like you integrating yeah. country music and hip hop. Oh yeah, absolutely. Wow. Wow. Even now, absolutely. Wow. I, feel, I feel bad for people that only listen to one form of music. You're missing an entire life of memories. So if you're in Nashville and you try to like, let's say, you know, I don't know, drop a mashup with F and F and like, you know, mm-hmm. and then and like some country music song, kill it. You think it it would it yeah. would do well? Yeah, Nashville, Nashville on a Tuesday is most cities on a Saturday. There's people from all over the world coming in to party. Okay, what what are, is there certain cities that you got to be careful with? Yeah, um, anywhere on the West Coast, you got to know you got to know the West Coast music pretty strong because they're proud. You, West Coast is proud of their music. New York's proud of your music. You know what I mean? Right, right. So you got to have your your respect game if that makes any sense. You come in, you're going to do you, but but you got to give them theirs. I learned that in Trinidad when we when I went in. I was had you went to Trinidad. I played it. And, <laughs> I want to hear this story. Dude, no, walked man. in and this beautiful <laughs> club, and I just got in, man. I was just doing me, just getting down all I could. And the guy's like, "Kelly Soka," I'm like. Oh boy, and I don't. Uh, but I, I started just downloading. I started playing the music and l- earned their respect. I, that was when I realized: is I don't care who you are, who you think you are. You got to give that crowd something if you want something back. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's uh, and you know, and and to see the music, it was it's infectious. You know, go to Rio and see Carnival, and and you just got to learn from every type of music. Just listen to your podcast the other day about the reggaeton. I was like, I'm in, man. I, I've got a hole in my game. Let's close it up. Right. It's interesting you say you, you got to give for yeah. them to get, for you to get a little bit. I want to leave here friends, but I want, I want you to know who I am and yeah. I want to know who you are. I feel like sometimes, maybe not, maybe outside of the open format realm of DJs, I feel like some of these DJs who are like, you know, big names and they've, they've made a name for themselves in production, mm-hmm. I feel like they, they expect the crowd to worship, to cater to them, right? Mm-hmm. They play, they're playing their 12 songs, whether right. you want it or not. But only open format DJs truly understand that it's like I gotta, I gotta win their love first. I gotta yeah. give them something, and then I could show them a little bit of who I am. Yeah, and then you know maybe they'll accept me. I feel like we're all the same. It's like you when you're playing a record, you can feel the energy come out of the room a little bit, and you want to put that energy back in. So whatever that record didn't hit for whatever reason, don't be afraid to change that record. Mm. And, it, what's the like? I don't know what. I don't want to like. Uh, you know, speak on like, you know, your negative moments in, in, yeah. in your career, but what was the toughest city where you had to like adjust? And even to this day, you know, like sometimes yeah. if you bomb in a city, you have like this, um, I don't know, like this fear. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like, San you know, Diego. <laughs> is this San Diego? <laughs> uh, I would say, I would tell you probably my worst. And you know, meanwhile, yeah. San, is it San Diego's my favorite city. To Dude, be not there. mine too. But at the end of the day, I was like, yeah. that's when I learned, man, you better have your West coast guns cocked. Uh, Temple nightclub. And is that San Francisco? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they booked oh, me. Oh, Temple. Yeah. Wow. They booked me. And I mean, I'm downstairs. I was, I was originally supposed to be in the main room. And some guy from, I know, still to this day, don't know who this cat is. They rescheduled. He's a big house DJ from Germany or something. They're like, Silver, will you play downstairs? I was like, shit, yeah, I'll go play downstairs. And, and, and then downstairs is like a low ceiling, dark ass room. Yeah, like a true hip hop room. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. True West Coast hip hop room. Well, it, it reminds me of New York. It, it's like a sweat box. And nobody yeah. told me that. Yeah. But nobody told like me. you don't want to be there like in a gunfight or yeah. anything, right? Uh-uh. You're like trapped down there. No. I knew I was in trouble when the guy behind me put a bottle of henny on the table. I was like, oh <laughs> shit, oh shit, and this is true. <laughs> I, but I'm I'm doing me just party rock. They're very Bay Area. Very that bay. room. I mean, I don't know what it is now, mm-hmm. but uh-huh. back it was so Bay Area. Nobody tells me this. Yeah. Know this. <laughs> and so I'm thinking I'm thinking Bay Area E40 in the click. You yeah. know, mm-hmm. yeah. We might go back to the hotel for a second or something. You know what I mean? Hit a little too short, bro. No no, 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 no. You gotta go deeper. And uh, and the guy's like, never seen this much energy in the room, and I felt like I'm doing something. And this guy behind me was, probably, God knows how much he spent on this table. He starts rattling off rappers I've never heard of in my life. I was like, oh boy, but <laughs> shit. But you learned that day. That day, I thank God for the internet. <laughs> I'm just downloading originals, dropping. You know, just giving them what they want. Oh shit. But at, I mean, that is a valuable lesson when you walk in. 
you know that city, respect that city. You have such a humble approach. No, why it, wouldn't we play music for a living? Other people's music. No, no, but you know? there's got to be some fucking, you know, there's got to be a chip on your shoulder that gets you upset about some of this shit or frustrated or anything. I, I or? just, you know, I, I, I'm not the only thing that really pisses me off and people kind of talk shit and don't know me. You know what I mean? But it's like, give me a chance with me. I promise I'll be your friend. <laughs> and if you don't like me, fuck you. It's your fault. I just want you to know. I'm a good guy. Yeah, when I met him, he was the sweetest guy in the world. We're hanging out at Red Tail watching the UFC fight. That's it. Was, Pull up. Yeah. yeah. You know, like, uh, I had to learn a lot when I moved, first moved to Vegas is that you don't know who the fuck is going to talk shit to you, but yeah. you got strangers just talking shit to you All in Vegas. All the time. I always walk up with the guard. They might say I'm the worst DJ in the world. They might say whatever, but they're not going to say I wasn't nice to you. What's a room that you never get to play that you would love to play? Uh, Darren, South Florida. Just won't even book me. Wait, wait, I can play in front of 45,000 people that day and try to do an after party. They're like, I don't know, man. What is the, where is it? Darren's, Darren's I've never even heard of this. It's a great club. You, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you, man. Mm. You've named like four to five cities I've never heard of. Let me put you on tour, bro. <laughs> <laughs> We're first Korean country. I feel like, <laughs> I feel that's like that's that, a sub I felt it. Will you t- hey, we see if that's trademark. <laughs> I, I feel like that would be like an amazing um, TV show. Yeah. <laughs> It's just, just me and Neva on tour. A reality show. Yeah, reality show. <laughs> it's just me and Neva on tour with Silver. Midwest swinging. <laughs> like, I feel like we can write a song. Neva, imagine you in like an arena with all these country fans, <laughs> and you have to pill, you have to, you have to juggle. It's like these challenges, like a reality show challenge. Like, can you hold down this arena with I don't know how many? Usually, like twenty thousand at least. Yeah, yeah. 20, I, would, I would definitely need Silver help. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you, you'd win. You, you'd look at me like, bro, what is this? I'm just, it's like, I just say, drop that. Do you think you could do it? Like I said, I would need his help. Maybe if he gave me the right songs. Five yeah. minutes with me, you could do it. Okay, in your in your opinion, how long would it take for you to be like, I'm good. I, I, I'm good at this. Like, I like to get in the groove of everything. I would how say one gigs? gig. I would say one gig for now. One gig? Yeah, he because because when he did he did Texas and I I sent him a bunch of Spanish songs. He knew what he was doing after one gig with those parents. He's a great DJ. I'm not saying he's here, but your your music knowledge is. Mm-hmm. Like I listen to you talk in this podcast about music sometimes. It's crazy. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's a library. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I he's can't like, remember what I had for lunch. Yeah. No, you, he's like an idiot savant. I am. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Way to give yourself I credit. Also, I also think you take it up right. <laughs> <laughs> it is savant. Yes. Yeah, oh, can anyone in this room spell savant? <laughs> but I think you're good enough to do and I think you're taking a pride in what you do where you're like, I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to yeah. walk in and I'm going to represent right. myself the highest way possible. Well, he has, mm-hmm. well, it's ego, right? You, yeah, you need to be. have that ego where you're not going to let, you know, like anything like kind of bring you down. Yeah, like, exactly. I just yeah. Not, this is not going to affect you. You don't ever want to leave a room mm-hmm. going, damn, I fucked that up. Yeah. yeah. And I we've think, all done it, I'm I mean, sure. I mean, and if it happens, yeah, you just got to do better next time. It. So it won't that's happen it. again. I think it just gets complicated when certain cities don't fuck with certain country music. I don't know if, that, if it happens like that. Yeah. No? Yeah. But you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like a lot of like, I remember Cali. I started seeing this in the early 2000s. You'd be shocked the size of country music in California. Really? Yeah. We well, get, we get well, some- well, well, I'm talking about is like if I go like if I would hear Cali DJs in New York mm-hmm. and they're trying to play Cali hip hop in New yeah, York and uh, I'm like, oh, this saying. is not going over. Mm-hmm. And then like New Yorkers would come to Cali and they they try to play what they think is Cali like a Cali set. It's almost insulting because that's what you think of me. Yeah, it's like yeah. I like yeah. I can't like I hear so many LA dudes talk shit about New York DJs that come into LA mm-hmm. and they're like, why are you playing this Dr. Dre LA set? Yeah. Like we don't want to hear this <laughs> shit. Like we don't want to hear. And I'm I, sitting I there loading the, up the <laughs> tracks, going, "Bro, I can't wait to drop this shit tonight." I think they're always like, uh, "Why is every New Yorker coming to LA and dropping, going back to Cali, Biggie?" Like we don't want to hear that shit. Like nobody wants to hear that shit. I, I'm I'm on that side. I was like, "Dude, this this is my twelve thirty banger. We're twisting the crowd with this one tonight." <laughs> but is there shit like that with country music? Well, I, I, yeah, well, I feel like country as a whole, we can go anywhere, and that same stuff works. Is that but what you're it, asking? Well, I'm asking like I don't know, like maybe. One artist, they'd be like in Nashville or one one state or city. They'd be like, "You can't play that artist here." No, no, no. There isn't anything like that. I don't know of one place that I go that I can't play something like that. It's only with hip hop, then. What the fuck? There's no, there's no beef. There's no fight. I think so yeah. yeah, you think it's only with hip hop? Think it's right? only hip hop. Yeah. Why is that? I mean, there's country people I won't play because I don't like them. But it's like, but it's not because the city doesn't want to hear it. Are you like you don't like them personally? Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, absolutely. But I feel like country music is like, everybody kind of works it together. For the 99 percentile of it, yes, sir. 
I feel like there's no. So you're saying there's never any beef on country music? I feel like there's I didn't none. say that. <laughs> I didn't, but I was just like, there's, there, of course, everybody's going for that same brass ring. They're going for that yeah. number one spot on the record. Everybody, if you're not competitive, like Thomas Rhett was like, I love him, but right now he's my competition. I got to beat him. And I, I felt that because it was like Thomas, the nice human being in the world, but he wasn't number one spot on the record that week. That's where he wanted to go. He's got to take down Brett Young. Mm-hmm. So when you were in the DJ um, country music realm, right? Mm-hmm. And maybe some other DJs started emerging. Yeah. Were you all cool with it? Yeah. Or did you feel some of them were I taking- I felt like I started something, you know? Okay. You weren't feeling like they were taking some of your shit? Or- no, I mean, to this day, they still take some of my mixes or remixes and put them up on TikTok and act like they're doing it. I'm like, that's cool, bro. Shit. <laughs> I'll take it as a compliment. Spiciness. No, I'm in, bro. It's not spicy. It's, it's like good for you because 10 years ago, you're like, that dude's fucking crazy. Why would you do that? You know? And it's like now it's kind of cool to come up, pop up, you know? Wait, what do you mean? Like 10 years ago, that would have been crazy. 10 years ago, if I had to drop, you know, I'll drop a remix of um, Eminem. I'll just keep using, I'll use another Luke Bryan song. Yeah. The song, um, uh, Don't Want This Night to End, is the same song as Teo Cruz Dynamite, the exact same song. And you put those things together when those songs come out. Wait, there was like something about that, I think. They the took ex- the whole melody or it's something. It's the exact same song. Wow. I mean, down to. Um, and I could go deeper, but I don't think you know this records. I'm just trying to go top pop. You know what I mean? Yeah, but let's play it. I'll, I'll fucking look it up. What yeah, look, it? look up. Don't want this night to end by Luke Bryan. Wait, did he get in trouble for this? No, no. Everybody needs inspiration, bro. <laughs> you hear it? Dude, I'm, I'm little, add the claps player. to it. It's the same song. Now play. Now, now play. Do you have an instrumental to Tail Cruise? Yeah. Play it. That's five BPMs faster. One in one key off. I didn't notice that. All right, so like you'll hear that now. You before you would do that, and people would think you're crazy. Yeah. Wow. It just did because the people that were listening to the that were not listening to that. The Spotify's, the playlists, the Apple Music's of the world were not there yet. So all these up and coming DJs in country music, they look up to you. Do they? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Do they pay homage? Like. Like they always tag me, you know, DJ Silver Inspiration or thanks, bro. Or they'll send me. The, I I think the biggest compliment is when somebody will send me a remix they did. Just say, dude, check it out. What do you think? You know, because mm. uh, it just it just shows that they're putting in the work and they and they and they felt something too. You know. Yeah. So who are, who are some of your favorite peers right now or DJs in country music that you? Um, like, uh, DJ Rock travels with Luke Bryan. It's one of my best friends. Um, and you know, and uh, there's they're all over. Uh, got a DJ backdraft and all he works for me on my radio show. I've got a sign- uh, syndicated radio show, 70 something stations nationwide. It's almost 10 years in. Wow. Um, and you do that every week? Yeah. Five hours. Yeah. Wow. And it's live. Uh, well, live on Tuesday. We played on Saturday. <laughs> yeah, <it's canceled. laughs> Wait, so, so I have a question. Yeah, so yeah. Jason, is he the first, um, country artist to have a DJ? Facts. Dance, you're the first country DJ. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So right now, how many um, DJs are traveling with musicians? So uh, country artists. Dirks has a DJ, a Dam. Um, Luke has a DJ, DJ Rock. Um, Jelly's got a DJ with him. Um, they're just popping up everywhere. I mean, I don't know them, but like the ones personally. But mm-hmm. every festival, every fair has every NASCAR race now has a DJ. Why is it that uh-huh. Jason felt the need to have a DJ? Because there was dead time between the acts, and he felt like when you walked into a concert, we've all been there, then like uh, the support act to go on, then the headliner will come on, that mm-hmm. 30 minutes of just Silent. bullshit. You're killing your drink cells, you're killing your merch cells. They're walking onto a cold stage. My job every night is to have Al Dean walk onto a hot stage. So typically, all these other artists would have had nothing. It would have been dead air. It it's been it's the front of house guy picking his favorite music to play in between. It's like going to Kroger. You know, You don't want to hear it. <laughs> so now to this day is it more is it like are there more DJs for a lot of these artists yeah, everybody now? every big tour has a DJ on it 
Interesting. Thomas Red has a DJ. All everyone, yeah. Wow. So it you just, guys were kind of you're like you've broken the you're mold. Like the Jackie Robinson of <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Slide into second base number forty two. Let's go. Two hours for front DJs. Shit. No, I mean, that's a, that's a crazy reference. That's a great reference. Man. I'll take it. He was one of my favorites. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. So you've broken all these boundaries in country, right? Yeah. Accidentally, I guess. Right. Yeah. I mean, just doing what you do. But I did it, which I didn't think anything was weird or different about it. Mm. So even like now, are there still, there's not as many issues with what you do with mixing hip hop. I mean, I remember there was like this little Nas X thing, right? Yeah. When he had Old Town Road. Yeah. And then. I um, think that was just because it was overplayed. And Billy Ray Cyrus jumped on the record. It's a great, well, it wasn't a hit until Billy Ray hit it. Billy Ray got on it. I'm sure. But I feel like that was just, you know, you heard your favorite just record on the radio that there's overplayed the shit out of it. And you don't want to play it ever again. I don't even have a copy of Old Town Road. But how did you feel about that record? I loved it because it crossed over genres. It crossed over a new fan base. That's yeah, yeah. Anything you do in this world, if you're not expanding your fan base and grabbing out of different pools of people, you're not you're not doing your job. So I got. Do you think they should have pulled it off the country charts? No, not at all. They did pull it then. Yeah, they took it off the yeah. country charts because uh, yeah. it was like vazi. It was like headed to number one. No, it was. It took. It took over the country charts. Mm-hmm. It was one of those. Like you go in for number one in country music, it could take months. You, you could put a pop record out. That joker could be number one next Tuesday. Mm-hmm. And that was on the trajectory to do what pop music was doing in country. And I think the people that run country labels and country radio didn't want to almost lose control of it, maybe. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like it was a race thing? No, I don't. No, I don't. You know, and, and another record I thought that was not country that hit country was the Vici song. Uh, Wake, Wake Me Up. Oh. That was on every, then they just pulled that. Oh, they pulled that oh, too. The mm-hmm. Hey Brother. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but that I was mean, that was the second single. But that's right? not comparing apples and oranges. The little Nas X was a banger. But I didn't realize they pulled that from the country charts as well. No, absolutely. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. So like, it, like I love country music um, <laughs> documentary movies. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> like been on a couple of those. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> or Johnny no, Cash. <laughs> no, but I love like Crazy Heart. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, I I love I love the ones like about Patty. Patty, what's it? Patty Smith. I was gonna say Patty Labelle, not that. No, Patty that Loveless, <laughs> huh? Patty Pat- Loveless. No, like all those early, like the uh, coal miner's oh, daughter. daughter. Oh yes. Yeah, yeah. See, like I love those those movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. But it always seems like there was this like council, the people who either made you a star. If you, oh, they had like the hierarchy, the the rank. If you sh- if you performed on their stage, you could have um, made it. With the Grand Ole Opry. Grand Ole yes, Opry, the Grand Ole yeah. Opry. Yeah. Yeah. Still a thing, yeah. and you pay for it's free. still a thing. You you play for free. It's like the Grammys of. It's it it is the uh, what am I trying to say? Do you uh, trying to find a place in hip hop like that's Apollo? Still, like it's the not Apollo like the Apollo, Theater. yes, it's like the Apollo, the Apollo Theater. Theater for country oh, music. Wow. Yeah, that's still a thing now. It's, it's going on tonight, and it's sold out. Damn, the Grand Ole Opry, and you'll have the biggest names in the world walk on that stage. And so I, they can't even play with their band; they play with a house band. Yeah, so I'm going to explain this a little bit. Mm-hmm. It's like you cannot make it in country music. Like, let's say you're a new artist and you're popping. Some doors are going to close. They're never going to open for you unless you play the Grand Ole Opry. You need to pay a homage to that stage. You need, to, you need to go there. You need to be invited or something, right? It's 100% invitation. You have to be invited. Otherwise, you're just seen as an outsider. Yeah. And all of these doors are closed. And they can literally take, and not that they have, well, they have, but right. I, they can literally take a subpar artist and shine them on that stage and make them a feature Straight, and it, it was almost like a comedian in the eighties and nineties going on the Johnny Carson show. That's it. Yeah, that was it your just, platform. It just it was like you didn't make it till you went to the Grand Ole Opry. Yeah. So I'm wondering, it's like with country music, you know, taking you know Avicii and uh, Little Nas X off the charts. It's because they haven't taken that step or that road. Is that is that kind of involved or not really? Well, I'll put it you know, just in personal experience. I put out records that have went number one in Canada. I've written records that have been big all over the world, but I've never had radio play in America. They won't play a DJ record on country radio. They won't. Uh-uh. And that's still, to this day, we meet with record labels. I said, my goal is to get a number one on country radio. And my guys back there are like, fuck, get on to play something first. And I put out great records. And you know, I don't mean that as arrogant as that sounds. You know? mm-hmm. I have made records. I mean, you should be proud of your shit. Yeah, I've made records that I love, and I've made records that I think someone else would love. And it just don't matter. But do you like? Do you think you need to get on the Grand Ole Opry? Is that even in your head or not? No, nah? no so the ship sailed to me. I, I would like. Wait, wait, in early in your career, was that a thought, a possibility? It came up. Was like, hey, let's. What? How could we get silver in the Grand Ole Opry? 
Really? When yeah. when was when did that? Two th- uh, when my country club record came out, uh, 2013. So 2013, 2014, it was just like no one knew how to do it. I mean, I don't need your house band playing. I actually need them to go take a union break. You know, let me do this. And also, I want to explain to you, the Opry, you you it, you sit there. They tell you to be quiet. Don't stand up. There's also a place called the Ryman in Nashville. It's called the Mother Church. It's the original Grand Old Opry. All I wanted to do, I was like, you know, I played this. I want to play the Ryman. I played the Ryman, and I never want to play the Ryman again. Really? People were standing up, clapping. The ushers were like, sit down, sit down. And I was like, oh, this ain't for me, man. So it's like really like a time warp. It is. It's it's made for a guy with an acoustic guitar to get up and belt out his heart, play his song. Mm-hmm. It's not made for a good-looking dude like this and turntables. Bro. <laughs> I'm just kidding about the turntables, all right? <laughs> Take that back. Yeah. So there's still, like, new country artists. Is there, like, kind of a revolution of, like, like new country artists that, like, we're not no. fucking with the Grand Ole Opry. We're going to do it not. our way. They're going straight they to the all, Grand. They all play by the rules. That thing. is that is the golden path to first base. Wow. Mm. Yeah. And the biggest honor in this world as a country musician is to be part of the Grand Ole Opry. Yeah, because I, I to feel to be like, given a, um, I don't know, not a membership, but you're the next member of the Grand Old Opry. But you have your dues for the Grand Old Opry are big. That's an ask. It's like fifty something shows a year for free. And wait, what? Yeah, and I don't know about you, but I'm not home fifty days a year. It's it's being so they'll do like a, week, a Friday night off. They'll do a four o'clock show. They'll do a five, seven, and a nine o'clock show. Wow. They'll do, come and do like two songs. And then you're do, and then most of these artists are doing it for free. Hundred percent for free. But people are paying for tickets. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> and there's something what, what kind of pimp ass hustle shit is this? It's fucking crazy. <laughs> Teach me your ways, Padawan. Yeah. Is there anything in the world that could do that? Well, I it, think the money goes for a know. bigger cause. It's like uh, you know. Yeah, where I mean, is the money the, going? The Super Bowl does that. Hmm. That's true. But the performance doesn't get. They don't, they don't get paid for uh, performing. They have Super to Bowl. pay sometimes. It's, right. it's titled to a charity, though. They, it goes to like I know the one in L.A. We did the Super Bowl in L.A. in Inglewood. It was went to the uh, inner city schools developing Nikes and tennis shoes and clothing lines, oh. and it was a give back program. Okay. And the Grand Ole Opry, what are they doing? So they um, they have the music. I don't know the names of this, but it's like a music foundation to help kids come up and play instruments, supply instruments, insurance for people's family get hurt um, it, it goes deep okay okay so it goes for a good so cost. the money goes somewhere they don't yeah you can go i mean you can get on the website i'm sure with the 501c3p is that a bunch of them. old people that's pocketing the money that no, i'm sure i mean <laughs> maybe I, I don't think that i don't think that bentley's running low on gas for those people but yeah that's great there's nothing like that in, in hip-hop right Mm-mm. nothing Nah, nah, nah. These OGs should have put something like that it's together. a rite of passage it's 100 yeah they should they should have put something like that where they kind of, con- I don't know, it would have been bad, right? It would have been gatekeeping. I don't know. It's low key. That's gatekeeping, right? Yeah, absolutely. Wow. It's a hustle. So there's yeah. not one country artist that hasn't. Uh, I don't know that. For, I can't speak you on can't that. You can't speak on but that. I've, but I do know that if they say, Jason Aldean, we need you tonight for the 50th anniversary of the Grand Ole Opry, he's, he said, yes, sir. Wow. No questions asked. Not like, hey, I'm booked in. Like, yeah, I'm in the... So they got to cancel whatever they do. No, 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 if they're available. Oh. I mean, listen, everybody everybody knows somebody oh, that's gang- schedule. That's, 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 that's gangster. Right. I need you to cancel Madison Square Garden tonight and about $7 million of okay. profit. I need you to come sing. That's gangster as fuck, man. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to ask you about rodeo. Yeah. It, you know, how big is this event in Vegas? Massive. In the whole country? This is, is it the one of the world biggest? finals. This is the biggest thing in the world. Biggest f- for rodeo? Yes, sir millions of dollars of first place what is it we used to we call it the rodeo convention listen this i'm not the right person to be talking on the i don't i've never been on a horse i don't i mean whatever <laughs> but these people get on these bulls and ride them and like it's a thing these dudes are worshipped these athletes are worshipped you walk into resorts where it's got a picture of luke bryan it's got a picture of tiesto somehow i got a picture of me then they got this cowboy pop-up right after. yep wow massive so what i've never have you ever attended any of this shit no no, nah, never. So it's just it's I, I played the PBR two week or first week in November, where that's like the supposed to be the meanest bulls in the world. Yeah. I actually DJ that thing, and these animals. So wait, like in the dirt, like and like where? Yeah, man, like in the middle of T-Mobile Arena, they had a lit up <laughs> stage and had my little chunky ass out there DJing, and these. But literally, these bulls are two thousand pounds. Yeah, they're moving like coming at you. Yeah, Shh. like horns flying. They're they're pissed. So this is a big deal. This week. huge. This is every. Yellowstone enthusiast to every real cowboy in the world is here in Las Vegas this weekend. Wow. Like, South Point is completely sold out. When's that happened? Do you know what I mean? 
like MGM, Park MGM, Delano, Resorts World sold out, all three towers. Sure. I'm at Gatsby this Saturday. I might need your help. I'm Somebody. there, buddy. Send me some. Uh, what time is it? What time you play Saturday? Ten to two. Easy. I'll All come right. in. And are you gonna go check him after? No, yeah. But the thing is, like, I'm gonna need some uh, country okay, music you. for these folks. I got you. I'll text you. <laughs> but yeah, I, I've seen you play Gatsby a few times. I'll sit right behind you. Oh yeah, yeah. You could drop some. I want, I want to get a photo, also, man. Some country music. <laughs> <Yeah. sir>. Mine <laughs> is yours. Wait, I asked them for the top five this year. <laughs> this year. Yeah, the, I the, want your top five records, new. Classic anthems, old that gotcha. would work like the DMX party up in here. Yeah, easy person. I, I mix them together. DMX party up with uh, Body Like a Backroad, Sam Hunt. Body like a backroad, driving with my eyes closed. I know every curve like the back of my hand. Doing 15 and 30. I ain't in no hurry. I'm gonna take it slow, just as fast as I can. Body like a what? Yeah. Body like a back? Back road. Okay. I'll like give you that. I, I heard body like a black girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, y'all motherfuckers just, crazy. What part of Brooklyn was that song cut in? Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, it's Sam, Sam hits, like house party. Sam Hunt kills it. We'll have a house party. We don't need nobody. Turn your TV off. Break that boom box out. I feel embarrassed. No, don't. There's like, I got friends in low pr places still hit? Massive. Massive. Yeah, yeah. I'm not big on social graces. Think I'll slip on down to the oasis. So I've got a friend in low places. That's, that's Garth a, Brooks. That's a throwback. This yeah. is Garth Brooks' song. Jason Aldean, she's country. Country, she, from her cowboy boots to her down home roots. She's country, from the song she plays to the prayer she prays. Luke's got several songs out. Newer, newer country. I love like the uh, John Parties, the Thomas Rhetts. Which mm -hmm. I know you don't know who they are, but it's like John Parties, like West Coast country. Every West Coast cowboy, you play that that dance floor. It's like fifty cent in the club the first time. So I got a question: If I go onto a site, are they going to have the extended or like remixes I, of these things? I make them under a different name. Yeah, you do. Uh -huh. Oh shit! Yeah. What's the other name? It's on Club Killers. I'm Roadhouse. So wait, you were, you were DJ Icon from Vegas, mm -hmm. and you guys started. What was it like? An EDM, EDM, like a like a DJ duo for like dance club country music infused it's like where you put hip hop southern EDM, rock meets yeah. party rock bro That's, with all of that yeah you guys still do it well Icon got sick I don't know if you know that no I didn't oh, yeah, liver disease <gasps> so we got the record deal we flew in and we cut the first record we came out during the pandemic we cut all the videos and he called me one day and, uh, and I, I feel like I can speak on this because yeah. one of my best friends and he just like hey I gotta quit I'm like bro what, what do you mean wait, you wait, when quit? did this happen uh, during like soon as like uh, we put out the record the September of the pandemic, so it was twenty twenty. Yeah, so it was maybe January of the next year. Wow. And he was just he just kept getting distant from me. Like he wasn't updating the side. He wasn't. I was like Icon, man, you got to work with me because I've got a steam here. I've got music. We produce. We're, we're, writ, we're right. records, and and uh, and he's like, I got to talk to you. He goes, I've got. To, I'm I'm sick. I'm like, how sick? I mean, do you need to see me? Call me Tuesday. He's like, no, no. I'm like going on dialysis sick. So he had to stop DJing and do his nine to five, and I had wow. to put Roadhouse on hold. Now it's, I've got another guy, but but it's Icon was my guy, man. Yeah, Icon, I could literally say, or you know, take over. You got it. He could rock that club to yeah. literally not playing at all. Is he okay now? No, he's good. He just can't drink. He can't uh, stand on his feet too long. He's still doing his thing at Feature here in Vegas. Like yeah, I'm gonna yeah, meet yeah. up with him probably tomorrow. But oh, wow, he's doing good. Uh, he seems happy, you know. Yeah, I haven't seen him or I haven't you know, seen him like out. since the pandemic. Like, yeah. yeah, it's been. I mean, me, it might, two years. Might be even on. longer for me. I haven't seen him in a few years, but yeah, that's shit. that's kind of when I we went from daily to like, bro, text me back, you know. Yeah, yeah. After the pandemic, now knew what he's going through. Now I know why. Oh, I'm, so, I'm sorry to hear that. Oh man, yeah. yeah so he I had, really, I'm, you know. Then they gave me the gig for all home Raiders games, and so I said I can't be there for all games. There's a couple. Do you want to do it? He's like, no, I don't even want to. Get back into it. Wow. Oh, shit. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. Shout to Icon, man. That's my dude, man. Yeah, like, for yeah, real, yeah, like... Uh, well, no, he was a, He's a, a, one of the best DJs you ever heard, but he's that much better of a human being. Yeah. Yeah. Great guy. Yeah. He's, he's, 
took care of me a couple of times. Many <laughs> nights. <laughs> Many nights, yeah. Many nights. Hey. Make sure I got home. He's taking care of me too. <laughs> wow. We were we were not the, each other's voice of reason, buddy. We both liked tequila. It was great. Yeah. I mean, we when we were like hanging out with Icon, it was definitely like the most like like I don't know, like definitely most degenerate Time, oh, but great time in the, in the in like <laughs> in the DJ world when like in in Vegas the we DJ booth at Jewel when we would play there it was just nothing but a bunch of dudes and tequila and Icon just smiling from head to head oh, yeah man. I'm thinking even way back like I'm mean, thinking about like um Jet Jet yeah. was it man just Bank on oh, Bank yeah oh, bank, bank definitely yeah we, everyone was going hard Bank yeah. Sundays mm-hmm. that was some good times yeah yeah, yeah. I'm uh, yeah I'm sorry to hear that man yeah I'm me not, too I, and he's in a good place now he's he's back yeah, to yeah. healthy but he he's had to change dietary restrictions and he's had to get back right to, mm-hmm. his, to life and being a being a dad and a husband you know man that's it's heartbreaking to hear man yeah. because uh, you never really hear about something like that taken away because of yeah. your health yeah, yeah no no. And he doesn't. He doesn't deserve that. No, he's he's one of the good guys that whatever reason it just wasn't the cards for him. But he he's one of the guys that deserved to be able to Google his net worth. Right. That's uh. Um, Damn. Yeah. I mean, that's. Gr- I mean, I'm well, glad he's doing well. Yeah, he's not dead, boy. Yeah. So you know, he's gonna get to you. No, no, no. You just didn't hear about it. You hear about it out of yeah. nowhere. That's how I felt when it hit me at first. I just kind of like, bro. So I'm I, just processing it. If someone yeah. told me, or like, if there was a decision for you to make that you can't DJ anymore. Or yeah. the decision was taken yeah, away take, from you. Taken yeah, taken away. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm yeah. saying like you have to kind of like tell yourself like I can't yeah. do this anymore. And I think that's, mm-hmm. I'm uh, I'm thinking about that and it's. Just think about the income yeah. that pulled away from you. Yeah. Well, I mean, even. Just inc- if you're looking selfishly, just look at the money because it takes your family's lifestyle. I think, I think it goes beyond. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, you know what? I don't have a family. Mm-hmm. So like that's a, that's a different like, yeah. worry, definitely. Mm-hmm. But I think more than the money, I think it's just like all of these the, just the years, yeah. the sweat, the energy, the effort, the That's sacrifices right. you made, and then to have it pulled away and then, you know, have to redirect. And at the end of the day, yeah. we're all addicted to that spotlight. Yeah. That, yeah, I mean, yeah. I feel like, yeah, we're addicted to that mm-hmm. reaction when we hear the, the crowd yeah. yelling or just yeah. going off. Yeah. And or have, just connecting with the crowd with me, just That's purely right. through music and energy. That's right. Yeah. That high. Yeah. That's it. You yanked it's, away from you in a matter of a phone call. Right. When we're setting up to go on world tours, right? That's uh, I mean, that threw me back, man. That's yeah. that's crazy. So wait, so you guys started this? So I walked in, got us a record deal. <laughs> so I got my second record deal for Roadhouse, wow. and uh, and I called. Uh, Kalika was with me, my partner in Blackout Artist. I yeah, called, uh, I said, I think you're a part of Blackout Artist yeah. with Kalika. Yeah, I didn't know that. So when she, you Kalika, started it with Black, with Kalika, right? I did. So she was working for Scam Artist at the time, and Kalika was always my. I always say this: Kalika Mokwin is a unicorn in the city. Mm. I'd, and I'd have her book me and I would just meet her at Delano breakfast and I'd just slide her an envelope full of cash that's how it was like and there, she's like come to scam I was like I'm not in the scam artist business I'm in the Kalika business so she had I think Karma Booza Q Icon Icon Shifty he was put, she was pushing Shift around a little bit yeah yeah. a very basic five or six staples in Las Vegas mm-hmm. and I said I'm going to come in with you. I'm going to take this. And I'm going to bring 30 of my favorite open format DJs in the world in, and we're going to put New York, LA, or New York, Nashville, Vegas. I'm going to put you on the map. So I took it. But the catch to blackout artists is, so if you book me for 10 grand to play tonight, I'm paying commission. I'm paying taxes. I'm paying William Morris, or my agent. I'm paying red light. And then I'm taking home 25, 30% of this off the knock. So with blackout artists, it's not an exclusive artist. It's for a DJ agency for DJs. I want you to hustle, but I want to add to it. So you call me and say, I'm 5K tonight. You're making five grand. Whoever books you is paying me your commission. Oh, so you're putting the commission on top. You're uh-huh. adding the commission on top. No, I just of say. The, I, of the fee. I just say, here's the gig. Here's what he pays me. Here's what you're going to charge me. To, here's what I'm going to charge you to set this up. Okay. That's a different way of doing it. Yeah. Time for us to win, boys. Yeah. So oh. wait, <laughs> I feel like it's a coming to, short to, in death row yeah. right now. Yeah. <laughs> no, but shout to Kalika. That's uh, it. And, and yeah. thank you for her believing in me. Uh-huh. And, and literally it was just, you know, I've got uh, 30 DJ shows this week. My DJ's in here this week. So is, is Blackout, so let's, let's talk about Blackout Artists. When did Blackout Artists start? Because it's a DJ agency, right? Mm-hmm. It's, it's a non-exclusive DJ agency. I don't have a contract with anybody. I want you to go out. I want you to play. I want you. I don't. I don't care who books you. I want to add to you, your hustle. Let me. You know, like I got a guy in Florida, DJ Brian Daw. I mean, he's he does this and this, but I send him 
50, 60 gigs a year. But when did this emerge? When did, when did Blackout Artists emerge? Like 2015? 2015. Yeah. It was definitely like a time mm -hmm. where a, like a bunch of agencies started popping up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At the, this is probably, and I could be wrong, so correct me. Mm -hmm. It was probably around or a few years after AM passed. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And then there was like, a, there was only, there was like certain, there was like what? Um, there was Dexstar. Mm -hmm. That's right. There was Scam, Scam. Artists. Yeah. And there was the Mood Swing, yeah. right? There was Mood Swing. I was trying to think of, yeah. Who was uh, Kevin Scott's agency? Was that it Dexter? Dexter, yeah. yeah. That was AM's. Uh, yeah, that was so good. Dexter I just AM's. ran into him in Nashville a couple weeks ago. Oh, you did? Yeah, what a good Shout dude. out to Kevin Scott. Yeah, beast. He, he keeps, uh, like, well, I, I need to reach out to him, but we've been wanting him on the podcast. But he's always like, I know, I, I, uh, in a couple months, I'm setting something up. And I'm like, yo, this motherfucker's lying. He's not, not doing, <laughs> he's not trying to come My on My pet peeve in this world is get on a post and say, big things coming. Yeah. Fuck you, tell me. <laughs> <laughs> but there was these, there was, when AM passed, it felt like something changed because all these EDM stars started coming up and there was like, open format took a side road. Mm -hmm. yeah. But then, the open format started coming back in like 2013, 14. Mm -hmm. So then all of these open format Agency started emerging again. Was there a and part I, in time? Let me cut you off. To yeah. Speaking of that, at that period, was there a part when you said your open format meant you were hip hop? Yes, that's what. Yeah. That's well, how the Vegas did that. Well, hip hop didn't exist. Yeah, you say I'm an open format DJ. Is like so you play hip hop. No, Vegas doesn't like the hip hop word. That's what I'm saying to you. Yeah. That's how they twisted that. I was like, no, no, I'm gonna play Chili Peppers to. Well, Elvis Presley tonight. Well, no, it was like you were a taboo, right? Yeah. yeah. So you were a mashup DJ. That's quote. That's it. Yeah. So they, they didn't even want to call you a hip hop. Let's be real. I was drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Do y'all remember that little Russian dude that sat next to the DJ booth that did the lights? I, I never sp spoke with him, but Brian, I remember I, there was a lighting guy. So he would sit there and he'd take your drinks and he'd pour it in a bucket every night. And he said, this is what you would have drank tonight. And hold this pickle bucket up. And I was like, God oh, damn, I'd have died. Yeah. I've never gotten that before. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe before my time. <laughs> maybe I just had a <laughs> reputation. I don't know. <laughs> no, but I remember they didn't want hip hop DJs. That's right. Well, they couldn't say hip hop, right? Yeah. yeah. It was just mashup. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I remember even getting yelled at when I started playing because I came from New York and we were playing, we were playing house. We were playing Bob Sinclair. Love it. Yeah. We were playing uh, David Guetta, mm -hmm. and uh, I would get yelled at by like Andrew Sasson or something. Yeah, like yeah. That. And then he's like only rock and hip hop mashup. And it was perfect for me. That's what I did. Right. Yeah. So then the mashup era hit and then EDM hit. Mm -hmm. And then there was like open format. They didn't want to say hip hop's back yeah. in the main rooms. Remember there was like a thing yeah. like hip hop's back in the main rooms mm -hmm. and they coined it open, open format. format. Yeah. And so, but that's when a lot of these open format agencies started emerging. And I think Blackout Artists was one of them, right? Yeah. She Around started with the, with the core five or six people, like I said. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. Then I come in like a couple years later and I said, instead of you making $200 DJs, Let's bring this in and make money. Yeah, and let's it, let's put the right people on. Kalika, she worked at Light Group too. That's how I met that's her. Started. Right, yeah. Her and Colin mm -hmm. would book me a light. That's how I met you. Wow. That you don't remember about that school. No, I'm, <laughs> I did. <young. laughs> Jesus, you know, like I don't remember a lot of. I shit. get it. I get it. I no. don't remember a lot of shit, and I, I apologize. No, for no, that. no, it's good. That's, because right. honestly, that was that's a really. It hurt ten minutes ago. No, no, no. no. <laughs> it <doesn't seem> like, <laughs> no but like, I just want you to understand the moment of that. My tour manager is like, fucking crooked, bro. I said, well, Crooked's with silver tonight. I feel like you're lying. <laughs> no, I swear to you. I'm, I'm lying like, about that part. But yeah. I walked over the bottle of tequilas. You're yeah. like six or seven I feet. feel like no one would care that I was there, for real. Like, no one would say that. No, my, my, my tour manager yeah. is a hip-hop DJ fan. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. He is that guy. Even with, still, I don't think he would say- The only thing, I don't believe you hanging out with like 18 people. <laughs> Yeah, it was a bunch of dudes. I, 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 don't I know, that. like I'm, I'm not yeah. E Rock, you know. Like that's something that's something E Rock would do, you know. Yeah. I wouldn't hang out with. I would be like in the corner, yeah. Yeah. like talking yeah. shit or something. Or no, like but you something. understand the setup. You remember light setup? It may still be that. Yeah, way. yeah. So we were here. Y'all were here. Okay. And there could have been five people, six people. You had a group of people. Okay. And I was like, fuck oh, it. Oh, you know what? It yeah. probably wasn't my table. It was maybe the Rhino table. Probably. <laughs> yeah. Zachariah. Yeah. I could see that, yeah. <laughs> Those were the days. Yeah. I was hanging with Zachariah. Then, but even then, there wouldn't be eight only dudes. Yeah, it was just and a and Zachariah room. wouldn't be in a DJ yeah. booth. He'd be you, on the floor. You totally had a yeah. mantraj rocking. Maybe the girls oh, no, had got there. The, that's not the Rhino table. Then. That's yeah. not the Rhino table. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm there. very curious. Yeah, no, that was it. I just put Are you sure you're not mixing me up with another Asian DJ? No. MK2? There goes my repertoire right here, bro. Imagine if he did that to MK or something i don't even know who that is or i don't like, mean any fits <laughs> could have been ben baller <laughs> scratch you went up to scratchy and just gave him a bottle oh, okay. but <laughs> i mean my dude rod he's he is the guy that was like this he's sitting he's, he's the guy that will watch 
turntable videos of just beat jumping. Yeah, but that's not me. No, I know yeah. that, but I'm just saying. But you were like, you're, you're known for hip hop in this town. And he's the guy that goes to the damn boom bap concerts or what? You see my southern yeah. accent just come flying out. I right like there? that. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, it's like there's certain words you just got to take out, and that's fucking it. Okay. Look, I I, I feel bad. <laughs> no, it's like, all right. I don't remember, yeah. but I also kind of I don't know if I believe all the all the little things of this story. Yeah, I just so. walked up, but then I said, "Let's go." I but I like I like how friendly and open you are. Yeah. But then as soon as you sense. Someone is using you. I can pick your bullshit up in a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it's very. It's a gift. <laughs> is that? <laughs> I don't know. But I no no. I I'm I'm kind of the same way to a certain extent. I have, I feel like we have a blessed enough, full enough life where we don't have the bullshit in the circles. If shit goes down, you got my back. We'll figure out why we had it later. Yeah. I don't need anybody's going to question me in a circle. No, not I, not so yeah. much question me or say no to me, but it's just like it's not home team. No, I've 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 actually learned to be. I'm really good at it now. Mm. Where I've learned to not give a shit about somebody, but yeah. still be cordial. Oh, I can say hello and hugging, shake your hand or whatever. Yeah, but like maybe 10 years ago, I could not do yeah. I, If I didn't like you, I couldn't be in the same fucking room. Yeah, I think it's you. part of growing up. Yeah. yeah. Not Is that, that what it is? I guess, man. That's why I felt like me too. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus, can I get a dollar, Dad, for gas? But, <laughs> but I just think it's part of just saying, you know what? I saw who I was then, and, I, and I'm probably not proud of that. I don't want to be that dude again. I'm going to be honest. With you. It could be growth, but it could be also be that I've seen a lot of um, despicable people yeah. like blow up. And, and become powerful. Yeah. So I never want to let a despicable motherfucker know I hate them Give because them they the might sense. be they might yeah. they might be my boss or something. Or they that's might, growth. Yeah. That's, that's growth. That's growth. Is that what? It's <laughs> not <laughs> fucking maturity. Right. <laughs> I'll be with them and I'll be like, "You see this motherfucker? I hate this man." Does he? He'll come up and be like, "Yeah, it was good, man." You Dude, how, how's mommy? You still got that cat? Is that thing good? Yeah. I, I won't give him like the full pound, but I'll give him yeah. like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah what's up, man? You chilling? Like, yeah. yeah, you look good. You look good." I'm not, <laughs> long like, term. I only have like a three to four minute parameter bullshit factor. Yeah. Well, no, no. I don't even know if it's bullshit. It's just me containing. And people start noticing. Yeah. No, no, and I'm just like, I, and then I'll quickly just move out. My key, I'm, man. I don't have my phone, but people are talking. I just. just you do my, that? my wife's like, God damn, dude. And I'm like, all right, my fault. You're on your phone in the club? I try. No, well, I, no, not in the club. I oh. just, but I'm just saying, when somebody's talking, it's like this, this. I'm just, yeah, buddy. Oh, wow. I can just. I, I want to go deeper into this. That's I, okay. I, I, I want to talk about this I, a little bit. I've more. been to many psychologists, bro. Let's rock. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> you dig up in this bitch, you let me know. Yeah, because I, I, I'm just curious to see people, like when I see people and I, I find like a connection with them, mm. usually for me, it comes back to something that happened to me yeah. that burned the fuck out of me. Yeah, yeah. So I'm wondering what, what you know, how- I just think you learn from this. Just take Vegas. Let's take everywhere else. Yeah. Vegas, no matter how hard you try, there's 10 DJs in there who want that spot for waiting us. for you to fuck up. Yeah. Right. And if, now I was maybe I was that guy. I don't know. But if I hear somebody mess up, I'm like, oh, I'm going to catch it back, buddy. Speed that up. You know what I mean? I'm rooting for you. Get back here. At least I know you're doing it. And whereas their DJs, oh, fuck, Silver Train wrecked at 1856. And, well, you know what I mean? I right, like, right, right, right. My bad. Somebody had to take this shot. Give me a second. We got this. You know, it's, but I just think once you get the negativity out, you feel it, you feel yourself full of people and just like people are going to fuck up. Fuck up is human. If anybody says that they don't mess up is a liar. I like it because you're putting yourself in a situation at all times, even yeah. when we're talking about before. Yeah. But you I've lived it. You don't, you want, you, you know, it, it's, it's kind of, I feel the same way as like, I want that kind of understanding as well. So it's like yeah. you want to reciprocate that understanding. Yeah, I want you to win, bro. Yeah. I mean, uh, I, I I want that next guy to win. I want her to win. I want you to win. I want, it's, if, we're a team. We live this world together. Is there a certain time, like, I, I, I had to shut this part of myself down where, like, the younger generation, I saw them as competition. And I had to, like, shut it down. I'm like, why am I competing? Yeah. You know, like, why am I competing with the next DJs when yeah. I should be kind of... Cause like I don't I don't know about you Nev but like I feel like in New York there was a time when some of the OGs could have like looked out for us All right or accepted us or, mm -hmm. or kind of like been like yo y'all the next generation helped us out well not even help yeah. us out but be at least acknowledge that I you mean, guys are the next yeah. generation mm -hmm. yeah like let's fuck with each other and let's get this money Let, together yeah mm -hmm. let's get this cat up to the next level and help me help you yeah I was yeah. talking to somebody about this in New York mm -hmm. actually I was talking to a younger DJ. And it's funny because I speak with younger DJs and like up and coming DJs. I talk to them like two, I talk to two or three of them a week. Yeah. And I'm like talking to them about career, marketing. 
Uh, sometimes I have lunch with them. Yeah. And I was talking to somebody, and they're like, "Why are you meeting up with these people?" And they're like, "It's like you're you're like a like a council, like you're counseling these DJs. You're not getting paid for this." And I think he was kind of going by like, "You should start like a counseling yeah. firm and like counsel and advise all these DJs." And I didn't realize I was talking to two or three DJs a week, help trying like. And I don't think you realize the power them. of your voices. People listen when you guys are on your podcast. I listen, and you know, did you listen to this? People share something with me from. Tallahassee, Florida. And did you listen to this part? Listen to the 11 minute mark. I don't think you understand the power of your voices and the influence you have on people that are trying to be who you are. I'm not be who I am, but, but no, how, you're wrong. You're wrong. People I mean, want to be like Jamie. You look at people. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that hard, buddy. I, I, I'm just saying Abercrombie needs models too. Right? I like it. But I'm, I'm just saying these people, you think about this for a second. Yeah. Where did y'all, I, you grew up in New, everybody, New York? No, Co- LA. LA. Okay. Say so you you're, you're like, I want to play Vegas. Yeah. And you see, Crooked playing Vegas. Yep. How are you playing Vegas? How do I get to be crooked? If that's the dude you're looking up to, do you know what I'm saying? Well, yeah, that was that was it. I yeah. would come and watch these guys, and I'd be like, "Yo, I want it." You know, LA wasn't close to what Vegas was no. in the in the premier nightclubs and mm-hmm. stuff like that. No shade to LA, but that's what it is. That's what it is. Yeah. But yeah, you you come, you look at these guys like um, the AM, the Vices, the Crookeds, everybody. Yeah. Like you want to become those dudes. You see these guys in the spotlight that you want. But you want to learn their skill set in order to earn that spot. Oh no, yeah, I would go watch them and just sit there like a fucking like. Just I, I still take notes, and when I hear DJs playing, like that's that song fucks. I'll play. You know what I mean? I like that song. What is this song? Or I have no issue pulling Shazam out if I haven't heard something. Yeah. yeah. I, every day of my life, I spend trying to learn new music. Yeah, I mean, it's what are we talking about? The OGs in New York. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I agree. Like. There's something to learn from every DJ. I actually learn more from a bad DJ. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But with, with this with this younger generation, like we've been like kind of like talking with them and acknowledging them. And I feel like the OGs in our day didn't even acknowledge us. I felt like they did this. No. I felt like they gave you the first core lesson of how to mix this record to this record. Take it from there. No, no, no. The, the OGs for us were the blueprint for pretty much club rocking and mm-hmm. and everything so we we actually looked up to them a lot i see what you're saying almost to the point where like in new york it's very different right mm-hmm. i feel like because there's all this history there's decades of like these djs and we grew up listening to hip-hop and they were part of this history like you know red alert was involved with zulu nation and all of these djs that we looked up to, all these rappers that we look up to mm-hmm. and then there's clark kent with biggie and there's there's all these djs there's a stretch and bobito there's so there's and there's Riz and there's all the Goldfinger there's all these DJs and we I would never I would think like oh they they shouldn't acknowledge me at all so at the time I was like I'm nothing and I'm just like you know and you're kind of hustling and you're getting through it but now that I'm older and I look back I'm like they they could have like maybe collabed a little more and acknowledge the shit a little more but you know what I'm saying like I think those are different times of DJing though yeah do you yeah, feel definitely. that way. Sometimes, but some of the DJs you mentioned, definitely, yeah. yeah I, but I don't think they owe us anything. I'm not saying that shit. But, but it I'm, could it could have done something. They could have done like, better though. But they were the first generation to do what we looked up to. But yeah, I'm also like their gen. Like when I deal with some of those DJs, because I want them on the podcast. I'm not saying all of them. Mm-hmm. But every when I've, had, when I've talked to those DJs, it's always like, well, what do I get out of it? How much? Yeah. Well, what's the bread? What's, what, well, what's I'll tell you right table? now, those are people you don't need in your life. <laughs> I know that. Yeah. But it's just, it's one of those things where you look up to them. Then they come at you with that shit and you're just, and you, you're and, deflated. And you spend like your whole career honoring mm-hmm. them, you know? Yeah. And then you, you hear them, you're like, oh shit, they're just all about the money. Yeah. And they don't, and it's like. You will never be happy chasing a dollar bill. Yeah. yeah. And it's just always like, oh, it's always about the money. Mm-hmm. I've met these heroes and I'm just like. And I think that's what taught me to be like, yo, I can't ever be like that with any younger yeah. DJs. So when I started looking at them as like competition, I was like, what am I doing? I'm doing exactly the same shit these yeah. fucking OGs did to yeah. me. The ego shit. Right. Or like yeah. they, they just saw us like, yo, these young motherfuckers are they're gonna taking take, our they're gonna money. They're going to take my spot. They're taking my spot. Yeah. Taking, you know, you know what I'm saying? Table, yeah. And I was just like, why am I looking at it that way? Yeah. Like it's just, it's just one of those things like, yo, if they take the spot, they earned it somehow. I mean, that's right. You know what I'm saying? It's like we got to move on. It's like exactly. you got to let the young guys come in. Exactly. But then it's just like we keep doing. I'm also surprised that we're still doing it. Yeah, <laughs> tell me about it. <laughs> you know, I was talking to MoMA, and I'm like, "Yo, I'm shocked that we're still doing it, right?" Mm-hmm. But not only that, there is a um, 
there's a revival of 2000s music. That's beautiful too. Right? Yeah. So not only are we still in it, but the era where we peaked lived it. We could go and back. We lived it. We could do the same mixes that we was doing in 2000 and yo, get away with it. I'm telling you right now. And kill it. I feel yeah. like I feel you're like, doing something. I, yo, you know? son, I feel like we're cheating because yeah. we lived that era. Yeah, I'll we take could, it. And we could. Spin, we know how to do it. We yeah. know how to spin all that music yep. so well. Mm-hmm. It's just for me. I'm like I feel like. It's just like everything's coming full. I don't know what to do. You're in your comfort zone. Yep. You think you don't even, it's almost muscle memory at the point. But you would think that we would, you would get pushed out. Like the music, the new music is like, well, the new music will wash you out. No one's going to care about this old shit. But then we've learned this year. It's like, wait, wait. Mm-hmm. And people care sure. about 90s and 2000s even more. Now. Well, what, what mm-hmm. is this song? Yeah. Do it to it. It's like, it was number one 15 years ago. Back again. Oh, yeah. The, a crazy. Yeah, yeah. The Cherish song. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The Cherish, the group. Yeah. Yeah. So I just showing you music does this. And until like new hip hop catches up with back to the back when Diddy would drop bangers, you know what I mean? Club bangers. I just, I, I can't tell you like one new hip hop song that I'm like, I can't wait to play tonight. Yeah. I that mean, sucks. I, I'm surprised to hear that it's uh, adjacent with country music. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. Where the, all the older hits just and the anthems it. are killing it. Killing it. Yeah. When, when you were uh, on tour with Jason. Mm-hmm. And you know, I'm, I'm I don't want to bring this up and have it destroy the mood. So, but it was. Were you at the shooting? Yeah, man, I was on stage in Las Vegas. Yeah, what? My kid was next door to the shooter. In the hotel room. In the hotel room. In Mandalay, Mandalay Bay. In Mandalay Bay. Your family was next door to the shooter. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, he had every room around me and my family, my nanny. Um, every room except the two we had. My God. Yeah. This is, do you want, don't this bother. is hard? No, and I, I talked about it once on a, on a network, and I, I don't mind talking about it now because I feel like it's the culture we live in, but it is fucking hard. It is hard. Wow. And like, you were on stage when that happened? Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. So I opened for Jason every night. And just every normal night, it, just, uh, it, was, it was just, a, the crowd was great, man. I'll never forget. I was just like, we're in my city, man. You know, this Vegas. Come right. in. 25,000 deep. You could feel the energy coming back to you. You know, and you're playing, you're playing your ass off, and the crowd's giving it back to you. And at the time, I was dated. I was playing rehab during the day because I was a resident there for years. Rehab, yeah. We'd mm-hmm. play in stadium, we're playing the festival. Then I was, then I play the foundation room at night or Hawkins on that night. And yeah, I just uh, world changed in a matter of minutes. My God, sure. yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't want to. I mean, we're good. I just think I think it's part of our culture now. You know. Yeah, how, you know how many people told me it was like, dude, I should have been with you that night. And whatever the plan was, God didn't want you there because you might not be here. Oh my God! Yeah. So <laughs> they just released the documentary. On yeah, Paramount, right. Yeah, it, it was a big part of it. Oh, okay. yeah. I told D Miles, I was like, and he said, "Can we talk about it?" I said, "Watch that first. Really? Just, just so you can see the the whole <clears throat> the whole day was just God. It was my kid was one. I we played we we did um. San Francisco, we played Oracle Arena the night before. We did L.A., San Francisco, San Diego, and then we come into to Vegas. So I play all three days of all Live Nation festivals, which I'm, it was such an honor. And I still do to this day. And uh, I was like, we got Sam here t- tonight, but Sunday, my dude's coming to town. Al Dean's coming to town in my city. I, I couldn't wait to have these people in my town. My billboard faces were all over the billboards. And I was like, hell yeah, boys, welcome to town. You know, And it just, uh, I just remember, it. I flew my family in. Because I haven't seen him in two weeks. And I was like, wake mm-hmm. my son wake was turning one. I said, come on in. Uh, and I called MGM and I was like, uh, put me at the Delano because they always gave us two suites at the, at the Delano, however you say it. And Rodney Flanagan, rest his soul, he, he passed last year. He called and said, hey, Silver, can I put you at the Mandalay Bay? And I said, yeah, man, sure. Moved us over. Wasn't a human being on this, this floor that I was on. And I thought that's why he moved us over. there. gives family a little peace, you know. And uh, come to find out, the dude had every room around us. Oh my God! Yeah, man. yeah, and I will tell you that probably the worst part of all of it. We got off stage, and shit's going crazy. People shooting. Their bodyguard comes and gets us and goes, "Get on the bus." Pushes us in the bus, and I get a text message now knowing it was mainly security going, "Are you in your room?" And I said, "I'm not. My kids there. Talk to me." That quickly. They. This was. I mean, I don't know how long into it, and I said, maybe five minutes into it. Five said, minutes into it, they're texting you. Yeah, because listen, Vegas is home for me, man. It always has been. So wait, I don't want to relive this thing. Yeah, yeah, no, it's good. But you're you're DJing and Jason's performing. Yeah, I, I played, I brought on Jason like I do every night, and then walked off stage, handed my ears to our, our ear monitor. So you guys were done. 
Jason, performed. Jason he went on. Done. I oh, Jason done. went. Oh, you were done. Yeah, and I walked off and sat down for two seconds. I remember I was like, I played night and day. That was my last set. I was like, oh, we're done. You know, right. sit down, and the start shooting started. Oh my god. Yeah. Then uh, what's we got it and. Uh, so, G- G- so then security was on it. They were pushing everybody off. They're putting they're putting you on the bus. Bodyguards put us on the bus. Police. We, there was never one time we didn't know where not, where to go. I was police officers here. So it happened really fast. Real fast. At the time when they were we were reacting. We were not acting. Right. So when it was all going down in your head, were you like, "There's someone shooting the crowd," or would, like it was like you know what I it mean? It sounded like they were shooters. I mean, it sounded like they were. People. So from you, you wouldn't fathom that it was from a no, building. I, I told my wife, our kid is a, wake, was awake, was awake. And I said, wake's fine. He's in the hotel, safest place in the world. Let's oh worry God. about me and you right now. And uh, Rhino, was our, Jason's bodyguard, best friend in the world. He passed it to it. He come up and he said, dude, on the bus now. We put on the bus and, and we're sitting on the bus, which the bus ends up getting shot 15 times that we were on. Oh my God. And, uh, and phones are about to die. And I remember we're all lined up in this bus. And I get a text message saying, are you in your room? I said, my kids in the room talked to me. They said, shooters on the 32nd floor. Oh, no. And I'm, I'm like, fuck. And I don't show my wife this for four hours. I lost my kid for four hours. I take my phone. I send the text to my buddy Cody Click. I said, I'm not being selfish. I need that phone charger. And I sent him the text message. He turned as white as this table. Send me the phone charger so we could have energy on the phone for a minute. Uh, then we, the police come and kicked it and told us to get off the bus. And that whole time, I it was probably about three and a half, four hours before he found my kid. So you're just waiting. And I didn't tell anyone. Just eating me up, man. I couldn't oh focus, couldn't breathe. And the only thing I'm thinking, he's here because of me. Yeah. Oh, my God. The, oh, yeah. that's a lot. That's a lot. To, I mean, yeah. a lot when you go watch on. that, when you go watch that documentary, they always talk about the guy that got shot because of the door alarm. Yeah. That was my nanny's room. That's why he was up there. Oh my God! You walked up the hall and dude opened fire. This is really close to you. This oh, is real yeah. personal to you. Real close. Yeah, everybody's like, "How close did it get?" I was like, "Well, that's how close it got." Like next door and across the where the shooting was happening. God damn. Yeah. Then uh, I got to my we got a, we got a jet sent my family home the next day, but I had to stay for three four days for what? interrogation for to meet the police FBI. Wow. Yeah. What did it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's insane. Yeah, you, know, you should have been hear. there when they're interrogating you. <laughs> really? <laughs> you know what, yeah. Wait, why? Because they're they're like treating you like you were part. They knew. Uh, they suspect, knew I had right? nothing to do with it. But okay, they knew. They're like, well, I'll just give those scenarios. He, they were like, they put you in. I had to meet with Homeland Security to get my stuff out of the room. They kept everything with batteries. They confiscated everything. Everything. Right. I didn't have toothbrushes. My everything you shouldn't have in a backpack. I had in a backpack backstage. Keys, wallet, ID, money, laptops. Right. I have nothing. They moved me to the Delano under a fake name and sent my family home. Met with Homeland Security, got my necessities out. But they kept my toothbrushes. They kept video cameras for kids. It was obvious for obvious reasons. Um, uh, I was, like I said, under a fake name. And they said, phone rings. Don't answer it. Well, the phone rings. I answer it. <laughs> and I said, who am I speaking to? And he said, officer blank blank from the FBI. Can we speak to you? I said, the sooner we talk, the sooner we can leave. And phone in my hand, I hear. Open the door, and there's three fully tacked out police officers, whatever they were. Two sat outside. One came in, locked the door, dead bolted it. And the guy put a phone down and said, this will be recorded. And he was like, you've never seen this guy. I said, no, sir. And he goes, how do you explain this? And it's a picture of me and him walking down the elevator, walking down the hall. Oh, shit. Explain this. Holding Ooh. an elevator door for the guy. Oh, my God. Explain this. Jesus. And he's just pulling out pictures. And I said, sir, I'm from Texas. I don't know a fucking stranger. But, and, he, and he said to me, he goes, you're in shock. You don't know it. Your mind should be a video camera. Your mind is taking snapshots. I'm trying to revoke a memory. Nothing. Yeah. Your, your, your voice is trembling. It's, to this day, it hurts. It, yeah. What, what, what hurts them? Just know that um, I could have lost my entire family for my selfishness. Because I haven't seen them in two weeks. I was like, Vegas means something to me. Does mm-hmm. that make sense to you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Vegas is my town, my home. And I wanted my kid and my life and my family to know that their dad was a big part of the scene. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I'm proud to this day that my kid loves Las Vegas. Right. Yeah. It's hard to talk about. Hey, I'm sorry. I'm over here crying. I, I, like, I, yeah, no, no, no. no. I mean, I've, I've, 
you know, I'm second I'm, time I've ever spoke about it. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I, I hope I'm not like you know. No, no, no. Totally this is like, part of our. This is part of our no. culture. I feel like it's part of our life because it changed what we do for a living that night. Yeah, yeah. Well, how, what do you think changed for you? My surroundings, my awareness, my uh, uh, just my close circle, my people, my check and balance. How, how so? Explain yeah. a little bit. I don't hesitate to text a homie. Say, I love you, bro. Mm. Be careful tonight. I mean, at the end of the day, that we know that's a freak thing. We know they weren't coming after us. We know some fucking psychopaths doing some bullshit. Right. But at the end of the day, it happened to me, it happened to my people, and happened to our crew. Right. And you, when you hear people, it's like, I was there, we did this. And I was like, I'd give anything in the world for me and our 62 people and our families not to be there. Do you and Jason ever talk about it? Have you ever Never talked spoke about once it? about it. Then in that documentary you saw on Paramount Plus, or when you, if you do watch it, our stories were mirror images. We never spoke about it. We the two weeks later we went out, and he said, "You want to talk about it?" I said, "No, mm. that's it." They brought us out counselors, and when I went and saw a counselor, and I was more confused after the fucking counselor than I was any, you know. But uh, and that was it. I, you obviously have trauma from it, yeah. right? To this day, when a glass drops, I hit the ground. I don't even realize I'm doing it. Really? Yeah. Do you talk to anybody? Do you speak with a therapist? I, I went to the therapist, and they said that I had no. What is what do they say? They said that I really had no repercussions. I don't have a, I don't, I don't have a reaction. I never like broke down. I never did anything. But he goes, one day this is going to hit you, because mm. I was in, not saying I was anything, but I went into fight or flight as a protect my wife and get my kid back. Right. Yeah. Damn. Mm. So. <laughs> yeah. So you just you carry it with you, kind of. Yeah. And I'll be, I worked my entire life to be on billboards inside of buildings in the city. I'll be damned if I let one son of a bitch take it from me. Right. That's why he's like, I still love this town. I still play it. I can't wait to play tonight. Do you, do you, do you like stay away from the Mandalay Bay or no, is there? I no? stay there a lot, actually. Stay there a lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The Mandalay and Delano and the people over there are family. How do you feel? I think there was like some people that I, they were against the documentary, right? They no, just thought sure. it was too, I'm sure. it was too early. It was needed though. It was. it was five years. It was needed. There are people that are going to get in that rabbit hole and you're going to destroy your lives. That was the first time I spoke about my whatever to anyone that I didn't know. Yeah. And they talked me into doing that documentary. I said no a hundred times. Really? And, and to this day, it's shocking to people to walk up to me that are very influential or affluent. I was like, dude, I saw your documentary. The head of CBS texted me. and was like, that's unreal, bro. As like when you when you're with your wife or your family or friends, have they noticed anything change about you uh, after that incident, or not really? I mean, uh, I don't I don't know. I, I felt like I've always been super kind to everyone. Yeah, um, I, I carry a gun with me where I go. You know, That's, wow. Well, I'm from Texas, where I always had, but I yeah, 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 never made it. You guys were born with one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I always tell people I live in the South where God likes people, so it was no big deal. But you know, <laughs> but I went to a movie theater the other night and it was in my pack. Wow, with my kids. And do you feel at some point, you, you, like I have, I've, like I always try to like get ahead of anything. I yeah. try, always try to be self aware. Hundred percent. So a, a lot of the times when something happens to me, I try to say, do I want to deal with it now, hmm. or do I want to wait and deal with it later? You never thought. I, I never thought like that. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. Know. So like it's like, do I deal with it now, or do I let it become a part of me, and grow, yeah. and fester into my, like kind of. Almost like a disease, like a virus. Do you know what you're saying? That's do I do I let it soak in, and do I let my soul absorb it, or do I put it all on the table, lay it out, and just do it? Really, I went to I went to the mindset it. of "fuck you." This isn't beat me. Yeah, this is not what my child will be known for. See, and my approach would be, let's put it all on the table, mm -hmm. and let me do the nasty detox. Yeah. Of talking about every little thing, it, every, it caused a great divide family. in my family, my household for a while. How so? If you, my wife yeah. was very no. My wife was very in the rabbit hole conspiracy theories. I saw shit come out about me. We're in the fucking Illuminati. We're you know. It, I'm just really there. Why oh, yeah. so? Why? Because you were next door. I just everybody's got a fucking opinion about something. They don't know shit from Adam. You know. Oh my god. I remember walking. We we did a red carpet, and I was in the car, and my publicist or stylist spilt something on me. Gave me a T-shirt, and it had a a pyramid and an eye on it. Literally put it on, walk down the red carpet, and they're putting you out know, pictures. DJ Silver's in the Illuminati, and he's putting likenesses of the Mandalay Bay. And I'm like, bitch, that was a shirt I got at Target on the way to a red carpet. You know, it's just That's people are crazy. people are stupid. 
it's I couldn't even imagine going through one of the worst moments of my life and, and defending having, yourself or like child yeah, and neglect then, and, and then, all that. Yeah. And yeah. And then everyone's saying that they're putting some kind of blame or having you put, thinking I had anything to do with it. Exactly. It's just so people insane. are like silver's kids in the room by itself, charging him with neglect, take his kid. I was like, motherfucker, I'll show you what neglect cost. Okay. Full time nanny, you know, yeah, the 50, kid wasn't alone. The kid was not alone. The kid, we had, I mean, that's crazy to leave, leave yeah. a one year old alone yeah. 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 In, a hotel. in a hotel. No one would do that. No. Yeah. And I'm talking like, usually we have the suites that are connected. Yeah. There wasn't. So we had to be across the hall. That's why the door was open too long. But we had a video system that we could watch. We could watch it from the stage. And and she was watching it, and that's why the door's open. She was going. There I mean, dude, you don't have to defend yourself. No, I know I don't. Yeah. But I'm just saying. Yeah. I, they came at me like that, and I was like, "Let me show you what fucking neglect cost. Do you want to see neglect? Yeah, you know." And that's like, I got I got super aggressive with that with that TV host, <laughs> and I was like, "I'm not defending myself. That's that's my world. Up. That's the last thing you got to do. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. Then we then we go home, and TMZ's following us around. I was like, oh. "Give me some fucking peace." Yeah. Wow. What when, a what a tough yeah. When was that? What year was that? 2017. Five like, years ago. Five years ago. October 1st. But that's right, because we started the Well, the thing, was, the thing was, D. Miles was doing Foundation Room. That's right. With me, I think, right? I think it, uh, a week later, mm. and he told me, yo, come with me, because I'm a little scared. Yeah. And then Crooked pulled up after. Oh, you he was DJing a week after. Yeah, the Saturday after. Okay. So let's explain. Mm-hmm. Foundation Room is in Mandalay Bay. 62nd floor in Mandalay Bay. 62nd. And it actually. Overlooks the, most, the site. The most painful thing about the Foundation Room at that time was that it overlooked. The carnage. The massacre. Yeah. The site yes. where it happened. So And you can see the window in a certain angle. You can see my dressing room with the door opening with bullet holes in it. So D Miles, I still have it key in to my dressing room, my record bag. You keep it as a reminder, or I, I can't get rid of it. I don't know why. It says Silver Route ninety one on it. It's a physical key. <laughs> yeah. It it's like a reminder of what you almost like, lost. Lost. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yo. Yo. So D Miles was spinning at Foundation <laughs> Room a week after Fuck. this. Yeah. Do you remember when they made me make that date up? Were you not? Were you with me, or was it? No, I don't remember. Maybe that. D Miles was with me. I wish he was here to tell. I don't remember who the opening DJ was. They made me make that date up, and I came back to play. Was and that, how did that feel? Fucking terrible, dude. People standing in front of you crying. Man, I'm just like, this is not what Vegas is. Well, the week after it was very like eerie in there, right? Eerie. Yeah, because he was in was there with us. Somber as fuck. Yeah. That's when me and Crooked talked about making mm-hmm. this pot. Where he came to me that he wanted to make a podcast, and it's all because. D Miles was scared to go by himself, which I get it. Understanding, yeah. And even that, like, uh, it was very eerie. Like, just being in there was like because it was the thought that that shooter was in there. Remember, they originally went in there and guns drawn and held everybody to the ground, looking for the shooter there in foundation. Yes, sir. I didn't know that. Yeah, really. They just assumed it was from that balcony. Because well, you, you don't think about knocking out windows in a damn hotel. You know how thick those things yeah, are? You don't, yeah, yeah, you don't think of shooting out the window. That's yeah. fucking nuts. Oh wow! So they went to foundation room first. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So I had to make that show up. Uh, so we did two weeks off. We did uh, Oklahoma City, Tulsa, New Orleans, maybe. And I had to come back the week after, and I did that show. Yeah. And uh, well, let's take had to out of it. I felt a sense that I needed to, and I felt a sense of fuck you. You took that night from me. I'm coming back. Right. Make I'm not going to let you. You're not beating. You're not beating yeah. me. You're not going to ruin this hotel, this yeah. my career, or anything. Yeah. And you're not taking that shit away. That's from right. Me. I walked in the foundation room, just typical play at midnight, get there at eleven fifty. Place is packed, lined down the fucking casino. You know, just staring at me. Mm. And I said, "This is not not Las Vegas. This is not what we're here for. Drink up and tell lies. Let's do something. You know, do something." And, right. And um, I'll never forget. I was DJ, and the security guards were all over me. That night, just packed around. You know the DJ booth, the foundation, and people behind yeah. you coming to touch you. They weren't within. I don't even know. I don't, I don't think those two prayer rooms were even open. I think they blocked them off. And and um, security goes, you got people coming in to see you. Heads up. And I looked over, six or eight dudes in suits just coming through with flashlights. And it was um, Tig from Benghazi wanted to meet me. Who? Who's the, that? Tig from the guy, one of the 13 survivors from Benghazi. Oh, wow. He went, he was in town, wanted to come say hello and meet me. To this day, I still talk to him. Oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah, it's heavy. <laughs> so, like, when when you came to Vegas afterwards, mm. did you still, did you get a, a weird feeling? Did you feel? 
I got a lot more text messages from police <laughs> tell us they were there, and I became pretty good friends with the cop that grabbed my kid out of the hotel room. And they were concerned with you. What was their concern? I was I felt like I was one of them then. Uh, we had a bond, I guess. Do you know what I mean? So they were just looking out for you. Yeah, and I would play at rehab, and there, the cops would be on the stage, or police would be somewhere in sight. Knowing that this was so close to you. Yeah, and I played. I, I played. And, and, and wait, so they were coming to be as a reassurance that you're okay. Uh, yeah, we we formed a bond. You know, that's that's crazy. It's crazy. And um, I remember we played Hard Rock. What uh, was it? Nightclub side of Hard Rock Vanity. Vanity. Yeah. So it was me and Travis Barker did New Year's. Wow, that's big. So we come in with Travis, and this is before Spider. What happened? Uh, Spider couldn't. I think make Spider it? maybe had anything else to do. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I love that guy, by the way. And I walked up. And, uh, and I said, uh, can I just get a shot of Jameson? And the lady goes, this is on me tonight. Thank you. Oh, wow. I said, fuck, I do. You know, and at, at that point, I realized it was people knew because of that. And that's not what I want to be known for. I just noticed on your, I went back to 2017 around that same time. I noticed you didn't take no time off. No, I wouldn't let it beat me. You went like two, like the weekend after I see that you were in Kentucky or somewhere like that. Yeah, absolutely. Kentucky, that's where we, where we went to. Uh, Louisville, Kentucky, Tulsa, uh, Oklahoma City, Tulsa, Oklahoma, whatever the route was in New yeah. Orleans. Do you sleep okay? No, never have. <laughs> thank you, thank you, marijuana. No, no, <laughs> I've never been even, able to sleep. Even, even before this, you no. had issues sleeping. Yeah, always. I was up at six o'clock this morning, and I saw four o'clock on the on this on the clock. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, it's. Um, do you want to sleep better? I've always wanted to sleep better. It's just, it's yeah. just, I don't think it's in my cards, man. Uh, no, I can sleep on an airplane like a champ. Me too, buddy. I can, I can probably fall I asleep faster than you uh, on a plane. Let's, I'm in, man. Well, we, uh, uh, well I just know that price. I don't have any say in anything that's about to happen. So <laughs> I just, I just, I mean, it's just, it's spiritual, but I just put my head down and wake up and we're in Tallahassee, you know? Wait, what did you just say about the plane? You have no say in what's going to happen to the plane? I have no say, purpose. I can't judge. I can't fix anything that's about to happen. So I'm, it's, I, I'm just, I can clear my mind. That's what I love about the plane. Yeah. If anything happens, what? I'm okay with it. What the fuck is this life jacket going to do? <laughs> Nothing you could do about it. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's the most it's comforting a- thing. Like if I, you know, I think it's, I don't know. The I don't, don't want to say it's the best way to go. You know what's funny? Right? It, I'm so afraid of flying at times because I'm like, I have, I can't control this. So I have such an anxiety yeah. of it. Yeah. But I'm, see, I'm such a control freak. I embrace not having control of anything yeah that's it i'm in you're, you're the same, same way. way you would have died on the way in here we flew private in you know first of all that's not a <laughs> that's a <laughs> <laughs> no, I, uh, Yo, you, you ever seen me on somebody's plane something so <laughs> <laughs> is it next to my travis scott yes. what do you say <laughs> <laughs> you ever see me on some on a plane just assume somebody else paid for it okay i'm the cheapest dude on the planet i would i would i would give you a rolex off my wrist but i wouldn't spend ten dollars on me so we're we're flying private, goddamn. We're on a private. The landing gear gear won't go up. Chain, cold, cold as fuck. We can't shut the the cabin. Won't pressure. Right. Pressure. We circle Nashville for an hour and a half to burn enough fuel to put that bitch back out on the ground. It took us eight hours to get to Vegas yesterday. Finally, get up in the air. One hundred and ten mile an hour headwinds. It's usually thirty to forty. That plane's and I was like, oh god, this is it. <laughs> this is it. This is it. We could have went to. Fucking Japan. Do you know what I'm saying? When we went yeah, to yeah. Vegas, three hour flight, eight and a half hours in a, in a private jet. It's not a bad thing. If I was alone, <laughs> if I was alone, I'd just be like, so it's going to go out this way. Yeah. And I'd be like, okay. Yeah. I, I just, what would piss me off more is if I had control and I and I died. Yeah, <laughs> no, no. And I could have fixed it. You know? <laughs> or like if I had two, if I fucked up and I made the wrong move. Yeah. And I was like, oh, and then, you know. Something caused the reaction. Something caused yeah. it. Like if I was driving <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God. But all I was I doing was eating cheese up. crackers, bro. I had nothing to do with that lady yeah. here, okay? <laughs> like when I'm in turbulence, <laughs> I'm probably more calm than Doesn't do I'm the calmest motherfucker in the place. Do you find it funny when you see a grown man? Like, yeah, yeah, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, let me, let me tell you what's not going to fix that. You grabbing my shit, okay? That's me. <laughs> Panic. As soon as I quit laughing, I would have helped you. <laughs> or like people like you know. I talked to Silver more. He's a little, a little bit more on the edge, a little bit. On the like or like people praying. Yeah. You know, I, you oh know. Lord, this is it. Yeah, yeah. Look, simple bitch, this is not it. <laughs> we got a connection to Dallas. Get normal. a fucking water burger. And shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, this is it. Oh man, I mean, I, you know, the only thing I would say is maybe think about, uh, like really confronting it head yeah. on. 
no. of what happened. Maybe I haven't put it off. No, you say because it's still a emotional. You saw me. I don't. I just yeah, don't yeah, want yeah, it. Yeah. To, I just don't. Yeah, like I don't want to take me in ten years. It feels so fresh. I, I tell you, you one know? of the hardest things is I was going to name my last album Wake, mm. and you Google Wake and it's just Root ninety one, and somehow I've got to change his. Um, Destiny's not the word. Sometimes I got I got to figure out how to change what that kid. I don't want that kid to be his legacy. Damn. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I just don't want, you know, yeah. I I just, I feel for you and your family and what y'all went through. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I appreciate that. It's definitely brought a lot of us a lot closer. Yeah. I just don't want you to, I don't want it to become a part of you. Yeah. And then I don't want that day when it really comes out. Is yeah. it hard for you to live that day again? Yeah. yeah. Like October 1st comes around? I don't talk about it very often. Yeah. When D asked me, we talked about it. I said, yeah, I talk about it with y'all. Yeah, but it's uh, yeah no it is it's there are people that ask about it and I'll change the subject or I'll just walk off because it's not your business bro you know it's it's funny like I I got sliced in my in the side of my my face and it changed my whole life yeah. it's like the reason why I DJ now and I always laugh about me almost losing my life you know like I almost bled to death you know I almost died and you know I you know I speak to somebody and they're like you know something's gonna trigger that shit. Yeah, Sorry, and I, I just don't want it to. And I know what's going to happen. It's going to be like either my kid or someone I love mm -hmm. is going to be in that same situation, and it's going to trigger me. I don't know what the fuck. How am I going to fucking react? Yeah. No, no, no. You're right. You know, no. And and that's what I'm more afraid of. Sometimes I've catch I've caught myself being more of a pit bull when people kind of try to approach my kid or I see somebody yeah. being mean to somebody I know. My wife the other day was like, "Dude, who are you?" <laughs> this kid <laughs> walks up and pushed my kid in a same. My I got a three year old daughter pushed her i was like little motherfucker i can't hit you but i'll beat the shit out of your daddy <laughs> <laughs> this ain't tough boy so i just want you to know my yeah, wife yeah. is like who are you and i was like dude i don't know fuck i like it though but see, turned my, on see my <laughs> <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know what my fear if i was in that situation and i don't know what you've been through right yeah you know i i can't even i can't even you know say that i know what you're going through yeah. but my fear if it was me would be like i don't want that emotion from that day to get expressed or I don't want to dump it on somebody and then do something I don't like yeah, you know what I mean to win the situation that I can't control where like mm -hmm. what, like a little situation like someone bullying your kid yeah triggers something from that day yeah and then yeah. you lose it you know what I mean that's, I do no no I'm not saying that's you no I'm but saying, I do know what you're saying completely yeah for me I lost I lost control for about two seconds here. yeah yeah see that that's my biggest fear is that you know I'm a control freak so mm -hmm. like I I want to be aware of when that happens so I'm, I can I yep. can, you know, yep. I can suppress it and understand it a little bit more. You know, my wife went to counseling. A lot of people went to counseling, and I was just like, I went to work. That was my counseling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there, yeah I tell everybody in the world, I play from 9 to 9.30 every night. It's the only 30 minutes of my life I control. Nobody's calling my phone. Nobody's, my kid ain't complaining about he got a, a stuffed bear, and my daughter's got a unicorn, and she wants the bear. You know what I mean? It's like that is only 30 minutes of pure chaos that I control. Yeah. And then back to the real world. I love I love that in, in the, you know this co like country music is like multi I don't know billion dollar million dollar business. Yeah, there's money in it. But it's but you guys seem so it seems like a small business. Yeah, and, 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 and at the end of the day we all come from the same kind of place. You know, yes ma'am, no ma'am and happy for you and I can't wait to see you. I know you telling me yes sir or yes sir. Like, well, I'm from the south, man. It, <laughs> that's how we go, brother. That's so how you know how like people from the east coast are like what's up kid? You know what I mean? I was like Yes, sir. No, sir. Let me open the door. You, I always laugh. And, and you, I, I hope you find this funny. You ever want to make a New Yorker feel uncomfortable? Be in an elevator and say, how's your day, sir? Yeah, I would Straight get nervous. Straight fucking lock up. I would get nervous. Lock up. I would get nervous. Put your wallet in the front pocket. <laughs> yeah. This guy is and I'm just crazy. Like, He's from the South. I'm just like. No, I'd be like, this dude's uh, a fed. Like, what happened? Like, yeah. what is this dude doing? We, we got a minute and a half together. We might as well enjoy it, bro. What you doing? I'd be like, were you following me, motherfucker? How you like, What are you doing? Is this shit tapped? <laughs> I mean, it's great. It's like that Southern hospitality, right? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. No, he's the greatest. Like, when I met him, I, we, we were hanging out at Red Tail. We were watching the UFC fight. I forgot what fight was it. But you had, like, a full table full of food, and you're like, yo, dig That's in. Eat, bro. Yeah. yeah, you're like, dig in, order drinks, whatever you need. Yeah. And did, like, did you do it, Jamie? Did you dig in? No, I didn't dig in like that, but. <laughs> well, I, you were welcome to. Or yeah, you, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. even told you, order it, off the menu if you don't like this. Yeah, he was like, you, he basically said that. He's like, if you don't like any of this, just order off the menu. I got you. And I was like, fuck, this guy, like. You're like, yo, big fan of the podcast. I'm like, what the fuck? I just met this dude, and he's the nicest human being ever. Yeah, it just does. It does no good to be 
upset or mean to anyone, man. I walk into a venue and, and they, you were with your crew. Like, always, your man. whole crew was there, like six, seven. But I was man fanning like, you, bro. You were the crew. I was. No, yeah, you were like Sean Perryman was next to me. The the guy from uh, the Chargers. I said, "Scoot over, bro." Yeah, I let you sit down. <laughs> I was just like, "All right." I'm cool. a Rangers fan, bitch. What did you say? <laughs> <laughs> it was me and Flight, and yep. I was like, "This damn, it feels like I knew you forever. You treated me like family." So I appreciate no, that. I, shit. I appreciate that. That's, I feel like that's how the world should be. Do you, do you extend a, a lot more co- courtesy to DJs? When you I try. Them? I yeah. try. Because uh, I, I feel like, I, I touched on this earlier, but I feel like the DJ culture in a whole is almost, it's, it's got a lot of hate in it. Do you, you know? Do. What, where, where do you get that feeling I just from? Feel like, from social media? Yeah, I just feel like everybody's jealous of the come up. Everybody's jealous of how they did this or whatever. Just, just be happy for that cat because you're up next. You could be the next guy. Yeah. Be that dude's cheerleader. You're going to, you want, you know, if I come to New York, I'm going to say, bro, I'm playing this spot, bro. I need this music. Be a team. I wouldn't hesitate to literally plug my laptop into yours and say, take it. You know, like... That I spent my life putting together. Yeah, yeah. I understand what you're saying with social media, but I th- I think as us, as guys who are kind of OGs and veterans yeah. in this game, especially in like the Las Vegas scene, yeah. I think it's important that... Because to me, the guys that are hating and uh, that are doing all this shit talking or they have all this negativity and they're bringing it to social media... I feel like they're not in any circle. That's how I feel too. I, feel, I was about to say is like you know the people in Vegas that have done their self don't have to prove their self, they, and they're just oh, you know just like you said, come have. Like, well, I, I don't even think they're in any circles because yeah. if you go to LA, there's that's there's, why they're not they, in circles. They, 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 and I and I always tell them, you know, if you're hating, that means you're not really a part of the community, that's and right. that's why I asked you if you extend more courtesy to DJs because there'll be a they'll I won't let anyone in the DJ booth. But if I see a DJ and I even if I even if I don't know him, yeah, I'll give him like eighty percent more courtesy than than a celebrity. Yeah, all, all day. I, I, do you know what I mean? I like, do. if you know, I don't know how to explain it. Like, if if we're stranded, or if there's a flight out, or I don't know, I don't know what to, I don't know how to, yeah, I don't but, know what example, yeah. but I'll extend. You will break bread with somebody. I'll yeah. extend a courtesy to a DJ, mm-hmm. and I'll give them a lot. I'll give them whatever I have. Yeah. At the moment or at the time than any other celebrity or human being or, or absolutely know. and I feel like a lot of celebrities not all celebrities but a lot of celebrities are entitled know me you yeah. don't know who I am kind of thing or yeah 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 mm-hmm. I just don't have time I mean there's some it. DJs like that too oh yeah there are yeah. absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> but I'll even give them the courtesy of being like oh he's feeling himself I just tell him he's what's killing it right now what's mine what's mine yours bro you want, some, want a shot yeah yeah I got a seat over there does your girl want to sit down yeah I'll yeah. get up and give his girl my seat I said, my, my whole thing, I, I get DJs that hit me up. They're like, yo, we want to come in. Is it cool? I'm like, yeah, yeah like, come in. You want the guest list? What do you want to do? Here's my bottle. Like, I'll give, and the thing is, I'll allow them yeah. the opportunity to disrespect me. Yeah, be my friend. I'm giving you the and, and I'll take the L. That's it. You know what I mean? And I'll, I'll be like, look, if you disrespect me and, or you, you like, I don't know, you do something to me that's foul, I'll take the L. Mm-hmm. I'll just know, like, to kind of keep my boundaries with you. That's it. You you put your mark on the wall. But I, but I'll, you know, but I, I'll give you all the generosity and like the the homecoming that I can give you as a fellow That's DJ. It. You know, when my my just goes all the way down to like my rider, I get two bottles of 1942, two bottles of Cosmigos, yeah. two bottles of Tito's. I can't drink all that shit. That's for the homies. Mm-hmm. I'll take a bottle and put it in the DJ booth, and the mm-hmm. rest I just come on, man. I think the only time where I I have a short fuse. Is if I'm in the middle of working and a DJ like crosses that boundary of asking me or doing something while oh, or I'm working, this. while I'm performing, trying to talk to you, have a conversation with you, yeah. not even that, <laughs> or doing something that's all about them that they when should, I'm working. They should know the boundaries. They yeah. do this, yeah, yeah. of and course, yeah, yeah. and they, they, they don't, but they still do it. Even even so, more than that, they should know what I'm going through and try to look out for me. liquor. Sometimes yeah. wins, yeah. you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, yeah. and I try to be like. Like we drink, I get it. But at the end of the day, I'm like, brother, yeah. have a drink. Hang with your friends, man. Or there's 15 single girls right there. Go do anything. Go over there. <laughs> Go speak to them. <laughs> Just yeah. get away from Hey, me. I'll give you this later. It's okay. Yeah, no, yeah. I don't want your flash drive right now. Right, right. You can have it in an hour. Right. Is there anything you want to touch on or talk about? Uh, I think we did it. Touch, yeah. talked. I know. <laughs> I mean, Silver, I mean, it's it's been a real pleasure having now, you Let me first say, this has been an honor. I've wanted to do this. And I never want to be the guy reach out, kind of be on there because that's just not how I think things should happen in this world. But yeah, I've been yeah. a fan from day one. And I'll text you and comment on, dude, that Joker's angry. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, 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 and just like you guys, one, 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 I don't remember who it was, but they were at a private party at um, on the record. And 
ushers in there and you guys are going through all this music. I have never heard of any of this shit. And you're like, yeah. Oh, like, that was, yeah, when um, I was when I was DJing and Usher came up the to Usher me. after parties. Mind blown. Yeah. Mind blown that you had that music. Oh, you oh. were there? No, 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 no. No, the, oh, the you, clip, I posted the clip of um, oh, yeah, yeah. Usher yeah. singing to him, requesting yeah, yeah. a song. Like that. Yeah, and, and the thing, it's like I said, so when you're playing, I'm playing. You know, so we're never getting the chance to be yeah. in the room, you know? Yeah. And it's just the the music knowledge and the stuff I, I, I've learned from this podcast. Like, you're not just blowing bullshit, but it's like when you started defining house and techno music, you know what I mean? It's like, then go, go to reggaeton and go to when they were breaking down New York and East Coast hip hop. And yeah, you, know, you learn from it and, and I appreciate it. You know, I, I was having a conversation with MoMA, a good friend of mine, you know, mm-hmm. from Everyday People. We were talking about yeah. it a little bit earlier. And, you know, he has this new, he has the, he, our Basel with Kate Trinata. Huge. You know, he was in a Beyonce commercial mm-hmm. uh, for Tiffany's. Mm-hmm. They're having an outstanding year. And I was just talking with him. And I'm like, you know, I'm so glad we have this time capsule, this like live recording yeah. of your history. Because no one knows, you know, from from 2017, 18, when I recorded our first episode with MoMA, you know, he's relatively unknown in New York. Kind of, you know, I mean, not he wasn't unknown in New York, but outside of New York, yeah, he's relatively unknown. But for to just to see the progression mm-hmm. and then the change in times, I, see where, I, I, where he started, where he is, and where he's yeah, going. we were kind of talking about this. It's kind of like a journal or a time capsule for 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 open format DJs. Yeah. Can and, I tell you what know, I took out of that moment interview? All the things he's done or said is yeah. when he said, his mama said, did you see the way Beyonce looked at my boy? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> and that being a father, that's that being, having a mom, having, you know what I mean? It's just like, I promise you that was his favorite part of that podcast. Yeah. You just like that moment Yeah, where you, you know, yeah. you get that, that pride, that, that's it. that parental pride. I remember the first time my parents came to a concert. If you want to hear about it, yeah, they came to a Fayetteville, Arkansas, Walmart amphitheater. My mom and daddy show up, got them tickets, had my guy go out and kill them, put them in their seats. I walk out and I said, Mama, where'd you get that shirt? I bought it from some nice young man in the parking lot. My mama done bought some damn bootleg merch from some cat in the parking lot wearing my shit. I was like, ah, oh, damn, mama. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just so naive and nice. It's just, but yeah. my mom was so proud to wear that shirt that had my name spelled wrong. Not only that, hey, you made it in the bootleggers, bro. Straight facts. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to go buy the rest of that shit. I hope you do it next time I come to town. <laughs> yes, it's funny. I, I, my mom came to visit me uh, in Vegas, and she stayed a whole night while I was DJing at Jet. Oh, wow. That's when I we did the whole nights, right? Mm-hmm. I think I did 1030 to like 5 a.m. Jesus. Yeah. She stayed there all night. I'll never forget Ellie Pacino was there. Uh, I forgot who was managing. And uh, they got her like a stool. Oh, so and she they, just watched your baby. Yeah. She just watched me for like six hours DJing, you know? And she, Did you do anything different since mama was there? I just did what I did, you know? I got you. I Put your motherfucking I, hands yeah. up. You Ma. too, mom. <laughs> I, I, I Cocaine. Cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> Bitches to the DJ booth. <laughs> you know, it's funny though. When people come in, they're like, they're degenerates. They're bringing shots. Yeah. Yo, motherfucker, what's up? Yeah. I'm like, yo, it's my mom. They're like, oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> I think complete. They're like, hi. I'm like, oh, you don't have to do the shot. You don't have to yeah. do the shot. But I, I probably didn't drink as much as I usually nah. do. Did you take it to Rhino after? No. Uh, did you, <laughs> did you Damn, get that man. cheeseburger pizza? I mean, I ain't never been there either. Did you get that? Do they have a cheeseburger pizza? Got, bro, I never had that. I'm taking it. Are you done? <laughs> <laughs> they got a Allegedly. Big Mac pizza at that Joker. Listen, take it from a fat kid from Texas. Yeah. Spiritual. Okay. Spiritual. <laughs> well, that being said, I ain't never fucking been to that place in my life, okay? For sure. Allegedly. For sure. You, you heard dropped, about it. I dropped a couple people off there. Yeah, yeah. You told me about it. Door dash. I, I heard I knew a door guy once. <laughs> but she stayed and... She told me, she's like, you know, I didn't realize what you did. Yeah. And she's like, no bathroom breaks on your feet for six hours. Yeah. You're controlling. She's like, she's like, everybody loves you. I'm like, well, that's not true, but you know. I like your style. <laughs> <laughs> but it was yeah. one of those moments where, you know, like my whole life, she was against me DJing. She was yeah. against anything creative. You know, she wanted me to go to business school. Oh, yeah. You know, and then she finally, like, got it. And I think yeah. that was an amazing time. That was a time. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I completely understand. That's what I took what out of the entire From that moment yeah. episode. Yeah. Yeah. That's Silver, it. thank you so much for coming through. Blessing to be here. Thank you guys. Yeah, man. I, I'm going to I'm gonna try to come through tonight. So yeah, let man. me know when you, I'm going to walk in with you. I want the, what the, time you walk the whole in? experience. I uh, played till midnight. So I think uh, I have to look. I have to look. Then, well, I, let, go, then I go back, back on after cheat code. 
Yeah. So let well, let us know. I got the DJ Plight shift tonight, which is cool. Yeah. yeah. I'll roll with you. Let, let's see what's let's go. Let's, let's do go. it. Do All some right. push-ups because we got some drinking to do. <laughs> <laughs> Silver, thank you so no, much it's for such coming. Pleasure, man. Man. I appreciate it, man. Good job. If you want to watch more episodes from Road Podcast, click either links on the left or the right. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube page and get updated on new uploads throughout the week. Peace. Yeah.